by 17 points. Paul Carter? Oh, I've gone for Maul to draw away late and probably win by about 27. I'm changing mine. Oh, well, oh, geez. Two? Drewin by one point. <laughs> Drewin by one point. Boxer, give us a couple of key matchups today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Brandon McDonald. It's uh, one of those things where um, BMAC's been in some great form here. He hasn't missed a game uh, or a goal in the game this year at all. Uh, he loves getting around it and getting dangerous down forward too. So that matchup for Jordan and Kingy will be big um, because they do rely heavily on Brandon as well. And he loves beating around the goals. Great to see Ryan Hearn here. Um, the big loss for, um, obviously, Tommy Johnson going out gives us. Uh, Dan Musel and Ryan Hearn, the opportunity in the ruck. So their midfield um, should reap the benefits of these key outs for Druin um, for the Tigers today too. So, yep, for me, down forward, uh, I can just see that, uh, you know, BMAC and, and others uh, to really fire up the, uh, the Tigers today. Noticed on the on the uh, replay from last week that uh, Tristan Wack did a fair bit of ruck work as well. Yeah, they just saw him now with the midfield coach there in uh, the old great... Uh, what's his name again? Troy Makepeace was looking after the midfield guy, and Ed, Ed Young man, Mac was taking good the man, ruck. Good player, well, the good bloke. The great comments, his, man. They've taken they've taken his statue <laughs> down at Mulgee, though. <laughs> they, they have. Go. He was one of the best special comments, man, with Gippsland Live a couple of years ago. You're exactly right. And both the, sides have been here. Uh, <laughs> both sides are getting a little ready in the middle of the ground now. Just Charlie, a gut full of this. <laughs> Charlie Bethune will do the ruck duties for the Druin side, and uh, looks to be that uh, well, Musil's gone in there, so they might even play whack and Musil both in the middle at the moment so Musil playing more of a midfield role there's one to follow for you a boxer as Tristan Wack will take the first ruck duties up against Charlie Bethune. Any other key matchups boxer before we start? Now I just can't uh, pick up too many at the moment but uh, I'll come back to you Scott. I reckon Charlie Bethune must have a big leap on him Well yeah, they do look a little bit light don't they in terms yeah, of size wise so uh, it'll be interesting to see who they do throw through the middle of the ground and that will be the key so for the Tigers, it's McCauliffe in the middle. Boyd Bailey, who's had a fantastic, and as we said, Dan Musil, who normally rucks, will take the centre work for the Tigers. Walford Druin, Jared Marshall's in there. I can see Aidan Quirk, who's been a good little recruit for him as well. And just trying to pick up the player just to the left. It could be, is it Salter? Or normally he goes forward. So we'll try and work on who that is in the centre circle for the uh, uh, that might the line. Shiv, Scud, uh, oh, the line. Yeah, Shiv, I think it might Nathan be. Nathan Noblet's going to start out of the square too, Scud. So a little bit of a different setup for the Tigers too, where mm -hmm. McDonald will start up on the 30, and Nathan will be one out down forward as well. So the other one in the middle is Josh Shiv, and uh, the umpire will get things underway. As we said, it's Bethune up against Wack, and Wack will get his first hand on it, clears the area nicely. Quirk gave a quick handball back to Marshall. His kick goes towards the half-forward flank. Walsh was the one there for the Tigers. Likewise with Klebney. He's able to pick the footy up is Klebney. Little chip kick. Inside nice. forward 50. Just gets over the top of Marrick. The Tigers come in. They give away a free kick. Clayton Kingy might be the one here and it is. Do you think they were passing out the peroxide during the week down at Druin? Because there's a few boys. There's a few it? of the boys here. There's one that's on the bench that we'll talk a bit more deeply about later on, but uh, there's a free kick here to Kingy. Uh, he's what is he? 30 out on a 45 degree angle. Right in front of the mall social rooms here inside the first minute of play as Clayton Kingy comes in, a deliberate sort of approach, a little bit of a skip, and then a right foot kick, and he puts it through the middle, and that's the way that the Druid Hawks like to get things going. Jeez, Clayton Kingy. Jeez, what a start. I mean, it's, uh, it was one of those things, too. We saw it in the reserves, too, when players were on that tight angle, how they really try and judge it through by, I call it a lazy kick, because it just allows the ball to move with the wind or, or just in flight, uh, and he timed it beautifully there, too. So a good start there to Druid. And on the LV Forklift scoreboard, it was 51 seconds to be precise that that first goal came up and Kingy's goal takes Drew into a six-point lead. So interesting to see what happens in the centre here. Tristan Wack obviously has got a height advantage. And a obviously vertical has a, and a vertical, vertical lead. lead. So Jesus. he got a clear tap first opportunity, but it didn't go Morwell's way. Has a clear cap oh. second opportunity. Same Guess again. What? Same result picked up by Quirk. Goes looking for a teammate in Jack Fraser. From the right half-back flank, he goes down the line towards right half forward flank. Good strong mark, front position. Tyler Brown settles the Tigers' nerves, finds a man loose out of side of the ground, just getting a handle on it. I reckon it was Boyd Bailey who uh, knocked it forward and found his teammate in Cody McDonald. He can't get around one, lays a tackle, and that tackle will see that the field umpire come in to ball this one up. Left half forward flank, Morwell now into attack after Druin got the first blood. One goal inside the first minute. We've gone two minutes first quarter. Musil took the tap duties, tapped it straight there, though. No. Marshall was able to get a hand on it, gave a 
quick handle to a teammate who kicked down the line. Gets over the top of Linton. Walsh will be able to mop this one up. His left foot handle to Brown. Put him under pressure. But, gee, ball to boot was very quick. However, it goes straight up and lands in the hands of Marshall, who can square it up to find Zane Atkins right in the middle of the ground here at the Mall Rec Reserve. A little nice. chip kick nicely done to Marrick. He's got the bright yellow boots on to Marrick. He puts his boot into it to the top of the square. And that's a chiseling pass. What a kick from Ryan Marrick to find his teammate down there. And it's Kai Quirk who has been on the goal scorer sheet throughout season 2022. A good recruit for them. It's a run over going to be playing three. Kai Quirk, he puts it through the second for the Hawks. Pop, uh, box. Yeah, I know what I mean. Look, as I was saying then too, just the disposal from all those, just a couple of turnovers there. But Drew were prepared to play that middle of the ground. They just absolutely, that little 45 inside, that kick there by Marrick was absolutely well called by you, Scud. He chiseled that in. He gave no, uh, the Moore defenders no chance to even cut that off. And if they haven't learned about roving to uh, Tristan back after those first two, they need uh, to have another good look at themselves. Ellie Forklift scoreboard, three minutes played. Drew and two goals straight, 12. Moore haven't made it into the 50 yet. All right, let's go take three. Wack will get the tap, but can he find a teammate? Wack gets the tap, and he found a teammate. Nicely done. He found it. Boyd Bailey, who knocked it off back to Wack again. And now the Tigers go forward for the first time. Opening minutes roved beautifully off the pack by Campbell. Oh. And has he put it through? He has not. A golden opportunity after some really sweet play out of the centre. And that's what you expect to see after your team is getting first use of the ball in the centre. Margin 11 points on the LV forklift scoreboard. Higher equipment and solutions. 33 Stratton drive. The kick comes in. Finds the target back in Hancock. Wrapped up in the strong tackle quickly. Holding the football. Advantage will be paid. The kick though was smothered. Lands in the hands of McDonald. He's 45. He turns. Noblet's going back with a flight. Can't quite get it on the full. He gathers it now. Twists. Turns. Handles over the top to Brandon McDonald. Quickly wrapped up in the tackle. Gets a handball out. Drew and I got some numbers. And they go through. This time it's from Marshall. His releasing kick out of the half back line. Doesn't find a target. The tables for the Tigers now to gather it through Brown, who got one over the shoulder. And at the wing, eventually, where the ball is now. He's been hot early, hasn't he, Brown? He has. He rolls around on the right boot, goes to centre half forward. Porikali is the target, couldn't mark it. Working hard as Kai Quirk back there. He gathered, tried to squeeze a handball back to a teammate in Aiden Quirk. Top of the 50 for the Tigers. Porikali just grabbed it and handballed it 5, 10, 15 metres going towards his goal. Can they run under this, the Tigers? They can't. As they quickly close to the Hawks, they were looking for a free kick. Here's Lopez. Gave it to McDonald. Squared it out to Bailey. Left foot shot on goal and the Tigers miss again. Gee, some quick play inside 50 for Moore. Well, they just couldn't get a clean go at it too. So well done to the Druin defenders to really bottle it up. And boy, Bailey just uh, missed on a perfect opportunity there for the Tigers. Two goals straight, 12 Druin, two behinds, two Moore on the Ollie Forklift scoreboard. Five and a half played this first quarter. Okay, Hermanson with the ball for Druin, brings the ball out. Uh, looks like he's got a plan in place. And guess what? That plan takes place beautifully. Joe Collins gets the mark outside defensive 50. The man of the mark being told to move away was Zach Carlson. And now Druin, geez, they're moving the ball nicely and they seem to have a bit too much room on the end of what, uh, that one for the visiting side was Quirk a kick with his left leg inside Ford 50 goes searching for his captain Clayton King who a quick kick under pressure just offline another score lots to like about the pressure Druin are applying to this home side 2-1-13, Druin on the LV Forklift scoreboard, Mall, two behinds, two points, 11 point margin, six minutes, first quarter. Scott, I see Anderson's doing the running for Mall. is he injured or is he just retired or what's happening? Uh, yeah, he's got uh, some long term hip injuries, he's going overseas for six weeks so won't see much of him. As the Tigers bring it back in, Bailey out of, the, out of side, kicks it towards the wing area, make pieces out there, couldn't quite mark it, comes to ground, this is Collins on the far side, he goes backwards towards Jordan Kingy, and he wasn't able to get it, McDonald swooped on it, quickly gave it to Porakali, who gave a handball to Bailey, they get it going forward, handball over the top, Jacobson to McDonald, he's got some wheels, he's got on a lead, it's Brandon McDonald who can mark on his chest, in front of Zane Atkins. And McDonald will swing around, thump a right boot into it. It's a wobbly top of punt, top of the square, strong mark in the end. And going back nicely, was that Salter back there? He took the mark and now delivered out to his teammate. And he finds uh, on the wing Harry Wands, who quickly got it on. 
to Marek. Yep, Marek's done well. Here we go now. So, uh, Marek Ryan type goes uh, looking for the corridor. Can he find? He can't. Oh. Team, and standing his ground with a bit of courage was Tyler Brown. Taken late, we oh. think. Behind play, there's a little bit of push and shove. And Brown uh, thought he might add some weight to I'll tell you what, the response from Josh Shiv. There'll be a report here, I reckon, and possibly a send-off, Bobby. There's a, there's a card up already, yep. so we're just waiting to see what's going to be. It happened with a draw and play. It'll be sure. Josh Shiv that will be sent off, I'd assume. Well, I'm tipping it might be both, I reckon. Okay, uh, let's see. The umpire's just pointing. Yeah, well, surely the, the play shouldn't be going on. Of players. So but both are off. And the Tigers are playing on the far wing over here, boys. And uh, I'll bring it back, sure. It's got to come back. So is it both players? Yep. Yep, both players. So Josh Shiv comes off for 10 minutes, and the player for Morwell is Max Linton, who also comes off. The player with the ball, that's important, isn't it? Tyler Brown has it, right half forward flank, 50 metre penalty paid. So the umpire concedes that the hit on him was late, and the kick from him is perfect. Cody McDonald, plenty of pace. I'm not sure I'm going to back him for accuracy. <laughs> no, Awkward I, I, kicking style. I'll back him in. No, okay. I think uh, from this pocket here, he's probably in a perfect spot. Um, he's a big kick. Are you surprised yeah. how much of a big kick he is? I'm not so worried about the distance. I'm just worried about the accuracy. So this could be anywhere from a goal to out of play on the full. Oh, and it's out of play on the full. <laughs> uh, look, I can't give you too much more information than what I did I might before he kicked the ball. I might have the wrong McDonald. <laughs> Sorry for that. Yeah, and we, special comments thanks to Poppy this afternoon. <laughs> the Carpet Country, helping dreams become a reality since 1981. Did they call that the commentator's curse? Is that what the, uh, is that well, what no, he sort of predicted it. Curse. Oh, okay, all right. So the ball in the hands of Collins. And he quickly puts it outside defensive 50. Mutual will fly, couldn't do. Mark Hearn handled over the top. It's good to see him back to Jacobson. Back to Ryan Hearn, who now goes forward by hands to Bailey. Little chip kick, nicely nice. done to Mason Porakali. He's got one on in the middle of the ground. He goes towards dangerous. Carlson. Does it get there? Well, it's dangerous, but it's high risk, high reward. And now Carlson will pass it off because he's got Bailey who ran on. It just missed him, though. Play on. Drew and do well. Lands in the hands now of Collins. He chips it outside towards Clayton Kingy with that bright blonde hair. Shrugs one tackle. Gets around another. Chip little kick. Finds a teammate. And Collins, who ran on, took the mark and comes in board and finds Campbell Jolly. It goes towards now inboard again to Harry Wands. He wheels and go on the left foot to centre half forward. It's a beautiful kick to Reece Salter. And he can mark it centre half forward. He's got quirk. He goes one way. Then he comes back the other way. Lands at his toes. He twists. He turns. He waits. He sags off and then chips it inside with a good kick. But it just missed the target of Klebney. The Tigers were able to get a handle on it. And now they wrap it up. And we'll have a stoppage for uh, 30 metres out from Druin's goal. What can you tell me about poor Akali, uh, Scud, his background? Uh, his uh, basketball background, haven't played a great deal of football in his uh, first year out of thirds. All right, the ball inside forward 50. Druin, free kick, that's dangerous. Smack bang in front of goal, 40 no, metres out. The other way. Held the arm out the wrong way. Yeah. Mitchell gets the kick. Gee, I got excited for no reason as this player, Tyler Brown, racks up another touch, comes grand side, stand side. And Campbell, he's uh, taken a good strong mark under pressure from half back to half forward. He goes the Tigers, have they got some runners? They don't need them. Brandon McDonald goes Lovely. inside forward 50, finds his teammate, make peace. and he goes well, make peace, kicks That's to the top of the kick. square, and it's an absolute beauty because Noblet is on the end of it, 10 metres out, directly in front. This could be the Tigers first. Yeah, the best set of player of the day so far, and it was well done to McDonald too. That's Brandon McDonald, who was quick to play on. His groundwork was fantastic too, the kick inside, but I watched Nathan, Mc Nathan Noblet lead inside the 50. He timed it so well, and it was well done there too to get the kick on as well he needs to finish it off now. He does, their finishing to date has been poor, both entering forward 50 and finishing at goal Noblet, no excuse, directly in front, left footer off the boot, looks pretty sweet but guess what, he's done what they've done a few times today and he's missed the unmissable Wow Taking them all to three behinds, three points on the Albie Forklift scoreboard, they're trailing by 10 points drawing a 2-1-13 11 and a half played first quarter just needed to go back that extra 10 metres just to get a real good hit on that ball. Jordan Kingy, nice out of fullback, finds Zane Atkins. He can chip it over the top. He's got one that works hard nicely in Klebney. And Klebney, just outside his defensive 50, goes along the wing. That's a nice kick in a lot of traffic. Found a teammate, quickly handed on to Marrick. His kick, though, to no one. And Tyler Brown just got no opponent, just missed him, though. Here's Quirk. He's got a little bit of toe, and he's got some spunk about him as well. And there's a chiselling kick in board. Beautifully done, finds Jared Marshall. 
I tell you what, he's been a good recruit, Kai Quirk. We've seen his name in the best. We've seen him named on goal scorers. And he's good. He's quickly played on. And he put it through Jared Marshall for another goal for Drew. And the umpire waits. And you betcha, Jared Marshall's got another one. And Drew and have got three. They capitalise and they make their opportunities count in the forward 50. What Drew are doing and that, what more aren't doing is just a better use of the ball. They're just using the ball a lot better, a lot cleaner, and they're prepared to play the corridor as well. So the, the errors that Moore are doing right now, Drew want to capitalise it on that too. So they need to tidy it up, the Tigers. And that takes uh, Drew out to a 16-point lead at the 12-minute mark of the first quarter. LB Falkwood's scoreboard has a hawked on 3-1-19. Maul, three behind, three points. Set shot so far, three for Drew and all goals. From all, one goal and one out in the full. So the ball back in the centre of the uh, Morwell home ground and getting it and picking it up nicely was Aiden Quirk. Goes inside oh. Ford 50, dancing around brilliantly. It was Tim Hancock. And guess what? Timmy's got another one. It's a contender for the Zambia. Goal of the day! Well done, well done. Turn me mic on there too as well <laughs> at the same time. Jeez, I did my bit fine. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that about Maul, they are renowned for slow starts, are they not? Maul? True. They are renowned for slow starts, but you're going to get a four goal head start against uh, Druin, who have got their tails up at the moment, and they just won it again out of the middle. Can someone please start rucking to whack? <laughs> And it's now a 22-point lead to Druin at the 13-minute mark of this first quarter. LB Fork with scoreboard 25-3. to three. Well, back to the middle. No one... I'll tell you what, Wax winning the hit-outs, but it's going straight to the same spot. And Bailey had it uh, three times in a row and been caught twice. And I've been thinking about this. Their half, uh, half, Tigers half-forwards need to push up, yep. especially through the set of bounces. Well, McAuliffe just wins this one through sheer brute. And then uh, Carlson put it inside forward 50. Went through the feet of Wands. McDonald's just going to give a handle out. There it is. Make peace. Can he capitalise? Oh. No. It's gone right angles off his boot. Here's Brereton. Gives it back to Lopez who will kick around the body and you guessed it. It's another minor score for the Tigers. It's rushed. It's ugly. It's yep. not clean football inside forward 50 for the Tigers. It's complete opposite for the Hawks. Four behinds, four points. The Mool and uh, Druin are on 4 25 That'll be Faulkner's scoreboard. 14 and a half minute mark. Okay, Jordan Kingy usually sweet with that left leg. Guess what? He was sweet as pie. Goes towards the outer side. They go along the line. The player that kicked the last goal. I speak of Tim Hancock. Oh, Gets nice. the end of it again. And here they go. Another chance inside Ford 50 for Kai Kirk. Long shot. Oh, oh, do not oh, tell oh, me. Oh, do not tell me. Oh. He's kicked another one. He's kicked another one, Kai Kirk. And he's put his hand up as a contender for the Zambrero goal of the day. That's, that's the difference because Moore was coming inside their 50. They looked, the ball looked ugly. You've got Makepeace who couldn't kick probably 10 metres. Then you've got the reverse when they've come, to, they've gone coast to coast yep. and the kick was absolutely magnificent. You kicked that from outside 50? Yep. Was he outside 50? Yeah, that was a great goal. They have got their heads up at the moment, Drew. And so Moore, you need to start getting defensive here. We're only halfway, Mark, of this first quarter and Drew and 5-1-31 leading Moore, four behinds, four points. That's on the LV Forklift scoreboard. So back to the middle, and the Hawks again are winning the footy. What do you do, Boxer? Wax is clearly winning the hit out, so Paul Carter will get to those in a moment. We go again, and Wack got his hand on it. Goes out to the back. This time, underground handle. Nicely done by Jacobson to Bailey. Goes towards McDonald. Nice little spoil there by Salter. And he's got some toe across half back. He looks for the boundary line. He kicks it, and the umpire surely will say deliberate. No, throw in. Well, I don't know which way he was going, so we've got a boundary throw in. 15 and a half minutes gone. The margin sits at 27 points for the Hawks. We know they can play some good football. It's whether they can put it together for four quarters. As this ball gets thrown back in, 10 metres towards Druin's goal. It was an errant throw in. The umpire let it go. There'll be a free kick going towards the Hawks out there. No, he's, no, he's right. called so, my ball. Well, we need to go one-on-one -on -one now for a little bit. You know, for the next three or four minutes, I need to go one-on-one. -on -one. So Wack clearly again knocked it down. And the Riley Lopez was out the back, got it out handball to Brown. His handball goes forward to Walsh. They're under a little bit of pressure. They went backwards yeah. to Weatherall. He's under enormous pressure. They've swapped him. And they've set over the shoulder. Free kick to Taylor Weatherall. Half-back flank for the Tigers. They trail by 27 points. Chip kick over the top, falls at the toes of Walsh. They quickly close. Here's that man that we were talking about before, oh, Noah Jarrett. They go really? backwards. Here's Grant. Oh, He's oh, under all goodness. sorts of pressure. Great work by the Drew and forwards. They try and work it out. They've got it now. Hadou Drew and they kick it high to the top of the square. It's one on one. Clayton Kingy and blew it. Good work by Brown. Super done. And he's done well. He gave a handle to McAuliffe. But his kick, poor. It's going to be turned over. Callaway will be there. 
Grabs it, goes backwards by hand to Atkins. They've called it a throw. Unlucky. Free kick goes to Wack. Half back flank. Kicks down towards the wing area. Nobler presents and will mark. He does too. Nobler in front of our TRFM commentary position. It's keeps land live at its best. Nobler kicks inside forward 50. Got a couple of options. Just need one winner. At the fall of the ball is James Jacobson. Picks it up. Open goal. Yes, sir. -y. He does what they've been wanting to do for the first 17 minutes of this first quarter. And Vets get one through the big sticks. Yeah, it was well done by Noblet too. Just that lead-up hit. Again, Tyler Brown, how, how good his day is going this afternoon. He's had a lot of the ball down back and just trying to repel what Drew wanted to throw it in. But a good lead-up there by Noblet. The quick kick in. It was a great contest there by BMAC McDonald. And then uh, you had Jacobson swoop on it and got the goal beautifully uh, on that angle. That first goal for Moore's come at the 18-minute mark of this first quarter. They're 1-4-10 on the LB Faulkner scoreboard, trailing Drew in a 5-1-31. I'll quickly go around the grounds. Thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland, and it's the Giants. They lead by six points over the Lions, and the Cats have a healthy 23-point lead over the Crows. So whack again, this time doing ruck duties against Sam Pratt. McCall have got one as he grabbed it and quickly tackled by Bethune. So interesting, both Tigers and Drew are both now playing, well, they're both ruckmen, uh, as extra midfielders. So... Pratt does the ruck duties. Again, Wack got a handle on it. And then the free kick being paid by the non-50 metres away, that umpire. It's going to go in the middle of the ground. I think it might be Harry Wands. And Wands chips towards half forward on a strong searching lead. Nicely done. Lands in the hand of Hancock. He turns around and chisels. But Tyler Brown, he's the sole contender of the Gippsland Ozuzu player of the day at the moment for the Tigers. Oh. He took the mark. He dribbled one on the ground to Brandon McCall. If he's able to run, though, and have a bounce... Quickly gets a handball to Whack. He's got no options, and he faked the handball nicely. Then get up, got it one-on-one -on -one inside forward 50. A free kick will be Ooh, paid to Brandon McDonald. Yeah, I think he paid the mark. He's paid the mark. So Brandon McDonald didn't mark it, but it was paid the mark. Very lucky. And he's going to have a shot from about uh, 49, make it all of 50 metres. Good run by Wack and also McAuliffe there, Boxer. Uh, yeah, it was fantastic work again. And you called it with Tyler Brown. He's repelling off that half-back line. has been fantastic today. Eight, 21. Eight, eight disposals to Brown. So Brandon McDonald comes in, puts it on its way and hits the upright. Oof. Nine and a half minute mark. First quarter. Both have six scoring shots, both sides, but uh, it's the one that's Drew and that's uh, capitalising every time they come inside 50. So Jordan Kingy to bring the ball back. Goes straight down the corridor. No, changes his mind. At the last minute comes Grandstand side, goes short boundary side. They do that well, actually, Drew, coming out of their defence. Caleb Hermanson is a player still inside defence at 50. That looks forward and considers his options. Out the back, the big fly, the grab. The play on was called. The player for Drew and was Tim Hancock. He couldn't take it in. He's been pretty busy. This player, too, and I speak of McDonald Cody type inside the corridor, 20 metres from Morwell's goal. Oh, well, done. a nice piece of play by the big fella uh, for Morwell in Tyler Brown, who uh, had an opportunity to kick for goal. In fact, it was James Jacobson, I reckon, and the ball comes out of defensive 50, but Musil cuts it off at the pass. He uh, feeds it off, and they find a man. Sam Welsh finds Laprise, or Laprise, as my That's better. comments man, Nick Lachino, likes to call him. Laprise. He's on the end of it. Can't believe you've gone away from the family pronunciation. They've uh, told us strictly. Riley Lopez will come in directly in front, Pop. He will. From 50, he'll kick. 49 off the boot. Looks OK. It's going to fall short. Maybe there's some wind out there that we haven't considered favouring Drew and Zan. I can't sort of pick it, but that ball seemed to hang in the air a bit. And the ball now is being fought by, or fought for, by three or four players from both clubs. And there'll be a ball up just metres from Morwell's goals. Drew and 5, 131. Morwell, 1, 5, 11. 21 minutes gone. Big moments thanks to Moore Bowling Cup. Puller Cowley tried to grab it out of the ruck. And now it squeezes down towards McDonald. He'll snap oh! around his body. It goes straight up and down. They're going to rush it through in the end. Although kicked off the ground, Jacobson might have this one. They've called it touched. I was on the last line of defence. They did well, the Hawks, but it was touched in the end. And taking them all to one goal, 6-12 on the LB Forklift scoreboard. Druin 5-1-31. So Druin come grandstand side. Sorry, Scott got excited and the ball went to the boundary uh, as Reese Salter kick off the boot when searching for his teammate in South Calway. Couldn't find that player. So right half forward flank, Moyle into attack. Druin trying to keep them at arm's length. The visiting Hawks have been good in the opening 21 and three quarter minutes of this quarter. They lead by 19 points. Sam Pratt, the player for Druin, who finds it. Uh, Dan Musil at grand level. Now a free kick's going to be paid. It's going to be Aiden Quirk. 
left half back flank looks through the corridor to his short kick risky oh. kick play on the call and he's caught ball and all but they've got the numbers around the ball they've done it well Reece Salter eases the pressure comes towards the outer side of the ground looking for and finding Zane Atkins runs to the wing goes in board nicely done in the end Harry Wands takes it he can quickly play on over the top it goes to Marshall he's too far out to score but he's got on a searching lead no. Tim Hancock no. and he marks on his chest now the big thing here is Tim Hancock's played back in the first eight rounds of his teamwork does well goes in board to Clayton Kingy and he'll have a shot on goal so Hancock's been a defender he's been tremendous today and he's been great down back all year for the Hawks he goes forward today and he's had a really big impact for Gippsland Izuzu Ute this afternoon it's like he's playing a, a, a lead up half forward but he's playing behind the ball as well let me find him inside 50 so his leadership's been fantastic so far today so Drew and lead by 19 points Clayton Kingy comes uh, in leans back on it likes it off the boot and puts it over the goal umpire's head they get the margin back out to 25 boxer a six goal quarter to Drew and who would have thought right now uh, that Drew was going to come out and do this too even when we saw him run out we thought they looked a little bit light on they didn't look like they were they had enough height there to match Moore. Who needs the height? They've got the run. They've got the skill. Moore, they just have to tighten this run right up now. And it's a 25-point lead to Druin on the Olly Forklift scored. 23-and-a-half minute mark of the first quarter. Druin 6-1-37, leading Moore 1-6-12. OK, back in the centre of Morewell's home ground, Charlie Bethune for the visiting side. Doing it tough against Wack, but it's not really punishing the visitors. Wack gets another tap. Can't find a teammate for around about the fifth, time, uh, fifth or sixth time at quarter time. Paul Carter will give us an indication as to how these sides are going at stoppages, considering that Morewell are absolutely winning clearly in the ruck the ball towards the right half back flank and it's Shiv who's come back onto the ground for the Druin side and kicks along the line can he find a teammate he can't the battle's on at ground level Musil's one of those players fighting hard at right half forward flank for Druin and the umpire will come in and ball this well, one up ball are just chasing tail at the moment because their defensive side of their game is non-existent Bethune took the ruck duties Druin get it forward by a quick kick towards Hancock Close to the boundary line. Top of the 50 attacking side for the Hawks. They lead by 25 points in the first quarter. The action here on Gippsland Live on Terra FM. For the first quarter is brought to you by LV Forklifts. Make sure you see Rob, Richard and the team. 33 Stratton Drive. Forklifts, scissor lifts and excavators and more. And Bailey from that stoppage got a boot to ball. Got it out to wing area. Burden had to bend over and pick it up in front of... Regan Hodge, and we'll have a boundary throw in far side. Good bloke, Robbie Musto. Caught up with him a few weeks ago. A very good fella. from my parents. Yeah, he's a great man. Yeah, he is. He used to be a decent sort of player, too. Well, it's a good name. He's got a couple of good sons that go all right, too, yeah. don't they, in, uh, in other good. leagues. Mitch, of course, previously played at Terrelgan, and uh, a good name. As from this stoppage back here, the more rec reserve, Tyler Brown. Saw it go over for a boundary throwing. Paul Carter, I just wanted to know what the inside 50s were both ways. 11 each. There you go. Seven scoring shots each. All thanks to Gippsland Azusa Ute. Key stats this afternoon. Box Lachino with you in the commentary box for special comments for Carpet Country. Musil gets the tap down, beats Bethune to it. Um, of all the people oh, he found, done. Musil, he gave it to Wack. Musil gets it back, handball to the advantage. He hopes that McDonald, he overruns it, as they're tending to do under pressure. They're in a oh. spot of bother. Mitchell dissed and dished it up. Backwards. And now Morwell's got their chance. But you know what? They're not making the most of their opportunities as Druin's Josh Shiva again gets on the end of it. He gives it up. They go inside Ford 50 for another opportunity for Morwell. They just can't do anything with it. James Jacobson with a boundary to his left left goes inboard Brendan McDonald or Brandon McDonald tries to lend a hand but Druin as they've done nicely eased the pressure with weighted numbers around the ball overrunning it on that occasion was Dan Klebney and now Morwell as a consequence of that spillage will find themselves uh, with the opportunity to go forward through Tristan Wack can't find a winner inside Ford 50 they're 30 metres from their goals the Morwell side they're trailing 1-6-12 to Druin 6-1-37 26 and a half minutes gone first quarter. They look a little bit one-dimensional too at the moment, Moore. They, they seem to be looking for McDonald quite a bit. They may have to look at different avenues at the minute. Poor Carly got a fist on it, but it landed straight in the hands of Collins who just barreled nice. it back out, and Sam Walsh takes the mark. The defender who's rolled up to half forward for the Tigers. Crowded forward line. Can he find a target? No. They fall in front. Poor Carly did well. The free kick will go in the way of ones. You know, maybe a Ryan Hearn to the goal square or just something that is a different avenue for the Tigers is what they right need at the moment. So Wands has it in his defensive 50. Oh, he's going to turn it over because Noblet will pick it off. 
His target's quirk. He couldn't get there. Hearn should be the target now. Top of the square. Noblet goes in that direction. Can Hearn fly? He's four deep. Oh. The siren beats them all. Poor Cali got on the end of it, but the siren went. Well, and it's been a tail of the tape because Mauler won 6-12 and drew it a six goals one. And skill errors cost the Tigers. Ball movement has been a rewarding effort for the Hawks. They lead it at quarter time by 25 points. And you're listening to Gippsland Live, thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. For family medical care, visit Sale Medical Centre. Find them at 73 Pearson Street, Sale, in the blue and white building next to Todd's Chiropractors. Sale Medical has five doctors on site, as well as allied health specialists, forming a team of qualified healthcare providers, supported by caring practice nurses and friendly administration staff. Sale Medical Centre also has bulk billing available to children under 16 and concession card holders. For more info, visit salemedical.com.au or call 5144 5766. Meet the all-new Cricket Explore 3 and Maker 3 cutting machines, now at Harvey Norman. Dream machines that make all your DIY, crafting and organisation projects possible. Now smarter and faster than ever. Cut up to 300 plus materials from the most delicate fabric to tough mat board. With Cricut Smart Materials, make single cuts up to 3.6 metres long. Cricut Maker 3 and Explore 3 are set to put a whole new world of creative possibilities at your fingertips. The new Cricut range, now at Harvey Norman. G'day, can I help you? Uh, yes, I hope so. I'm digging a trench in our backyard, uh -huh. so I need one of those machines yep, that yep, goes cook, yep. cook, cook. <laughs> oh! You need an excavator. Excavator, right, if you say so. And then to flatten out the dirt, I was thinking one of them doon, doon, doon uh, thing about That'd it. be a whacker plate. We know which piece of equipment you need for the project. Even if you don't, we hire them too. Mini loaders, drum rollers, tipper trailers and more. See you soon. Gippsland, Wacker, Noisen and La Trobe Valley Forklifts. Visit lvforklifts.com.au. Terralgan Football Netball Club, along with P&D Rigging and Crane Hire, invite you to their clash against sale this Saturday at the Terralgan Wacker. Reserve. All the football and netball action begins at 9am, with A-grade netball at 2.15 and the seniors kicking off at 2.20pm. After the games, you're invited to the social rooms for some post-game entertainment. See the Mighty Maroons take on sale this Saturday at the Trialgan Rec Reserve. Along with P&D Rigging and Crane Hire, this Saturday's game partners, 40 Winks and TRFM. Firepower Store Wide Super Sale gives you the power to save on a huge range of big brands, like the Tora Tires. Right now at Tire Power, you get the power to get 20% off on a huge range of Victoria tires. That's 20% off when you buy a set of four Victoria passenger car and SUV tires. But only at Tire Power. Tire Power's store wide super sale is now on. Visit tirepower.com.au or call 13 21 91 for your local owner operator. Looking to build in Taralgan? I'm Lee McDonald, your local new homes consultant at Boutique Homes. We've secured exclusive land with a variety of stunning home designs and unique facades. I'm here to help you find a design to suit your lifestyle in a fixed price package. Let's chat. Visit boutiquehomes.com.au Zambero's new big burrito is so big it'll crush any hunger. Loaded with double filling and double rice it's sure to leave you satisfied. Head down to Zambero Trialgan today. Available for a limited time only. Zambero. Feel good next. Hear that? That's the beautiful sound of the Morewell Bowling Club Bistro. The perfect atmosphere for a post win feed or a sorrow drowning loss, especially because Saturday is pot and parma night. Choose from the selection of yummy parma toppings. Only $20 every Saturday from 5.30pm. Includes a pot of beer, soft drink or a glass of wine. To make a booking, phone the club on 5134-3449. 52 Hazelwood Road Mall. Visit the website morewellbowls.com.au for other specials during the week. Now, a look at the cool highlights. Gippsland Live on TRFM. Jumped in, a deliberate sort of a boat, a little bit of a skip, and then a right foot kick, and he puts it through the middle, and that's the way that the Drummond Hawks like to get things going. And he's got this quickly played on, and he put it through Jared Marshall for another goal for Drew, and the umpire waits, and you betcha, Jared Marshall's got another one, and Drew and have got three. They capitalise, and they make their opportunities count in the forward 50. I speak of Tim Hengel, oh, getting nice. to the end of it again, and here they go. Another chance inside forward 50 for Kai Kirk. Long shot. Oh! Tell me, do not tell me he's kicked another one. He's kicked another one, Kai Kirk. 
and he put his hand up as a contender for the Zambrero goal of the day. Got a couple of options, just need one winner. At the fall of the ball is James Jacobson. Picks it up, open goal! Yes, sir, he does what they've been wanting to do for the first 17 minutes of this first quarter, and that's get one through the big sticks. Yeah. Gippsland Live on TRFM. Now, welcome back. It is quarter time, and Druin, while well, they've jumped out of the block, six goals, one, 37 at quarter time. Lead the Tigers, one goal, six, 12, 25 point margin. We've had a send off in the first quarter as well. Both players taking a 15 minute spell on the pine. And we'll go to the key stats in that first quarter, all thanks to Gippsland Ozuzu, the new D Max, born to live and born to tow. Here's Paul Carter. Well, they Fairly even in the stats everywhere except the scoreboard. Inside 50s, more lead that 14-11. Clearances were seven apiece. Centre clearances, three, four, Druin's way. Free kicks, five, four, Moore's way. Marks, about about 20 apiece. Marks inside 50, that's a lot in one quarter. Nine marks inside 50 to Moore and five to Druin. However, the scores score and set shots for Moore, two behinds and one out in the full. Druin scores and set shots, four goals straight. Overall scores, Moore, five behinds from turnovers and one one from stoppage. Druin 4-1 from turnovers and two goals and stoppages. The uh, Moore, Ruckman, Musil and Wack have combined for 16 to hit outs, 11 to Wack, 5 to Musil, up against 1 to Charlie Bethune. Main stat winner for Moore was 9 disposals to Tyler Brown, Boyd Bailey 7, 6 to Dan Musil, 5 to Cody McDonald, 6 to James Jacobson. For the Druin team, Jared Marshall 6, 5 each to Harry Wands and Aidan Quirk and Reese Salter. Boxer, you can hear coach uh, Dennis Knight at quarter time for the Tigers, uh, absolutely giving it to his uh, troops. Yeah, he sounded pretty frustrated and uh, disappointed in his troops and that's the first time I've actually heard him that loud and we're pretty fair away from him as well too. Well, second so, quarter's underway, Pop. It is indeed. Musil gets the tap and guess what? Finds a teammate. That's been unusual. McAuliffe was the teammate. He went inside forward 50. Guess what? He too found a teammate in Brandon McDonald who now has an opportunity to do what Druin did in the first minute of the first quarter and that's convert through the big Sticks. That's right. S T I C K S. Sticks. Brandon McDonald from 45 off the boot. Looks okay. No, just gone right of the goals. Well, it uh, was a good start from the Tigers. McAuliffe in the middle of the ground, but this has been their problem. They need to capitalise inside forward 50 as Kingy brings it in and found Pratt on the far side of the ground, who's able to <laughs> roll the right way and kick towards the wing and going up nicely, Seth Calway. He handled backwards, although they're going to say a free kick to the Tigers. And Cody McDonald will be the recipient on the wing. As McDonald looks towards Noblet, who presents and leads. Comes the other way nicely with Shiv. Got a handle on it, although the Tigers still have this one. It's in the hands of Brad Brereton. His kick goes high. Top of the square, it goes close to the barrier line. They spoil. McDonald's there. The handball's inboard to a dangerous spot. Bailey will snap with his left. And there's Zambrero, goal of the day contender as well. One minute, 22 into the second quarter. Boyd Bailey. Just what they needed, the Tigers. It was a good start. And maybe that little bit of a rev up from coach Dennis uh, might have given the boys a little bit more spark. They look a lot a lot more lively. Only We've only been playing a minute and a half, but it's some good signs already. And Hearn is in the goal square now too. So they have changed a few things up, the Tigers. So that was a good start. And on the Carver Country scoreboard, we've played one minute and it's been a uh, uh, margin back down to 18 points in Druin's favour. They're 6 1 37, Druin now 2 7 19. I reckon from memory, a lot of goals were kicked left of the commentary box or the clubhouse end a few weeks ago, and certainly seven of the eight goals kicked at this point of no time. breeze, though, Poppy. No, no breeze. No, it's <laughs> surprising too because there doesn't appear to be, but there's a a favourite in for some reason. Musil gets the tap down. Can't find a teammate this time. Josh Shiv, who's been busy, despite the fact he spent some time on the bench. Talk about that at the halftime. And now Morwell through Cody McDonald. Handball off, and they find themselves around about the half-forward flank through Brereton. Gets her handball off, and they come inboard. This could be dangerous for Druin. On the end of it is going to be Morwell Sam Walsh, who kicks to the top of the square. Can't find a teammate. Back of the pack. Druin have got the numbers, but only momentarily because the black and yellow 
Warriors are starting to close in quickly. Can they get a handle on it? They can. They give Grant to try to keep possession. They can't. It spills out. The race is on. And at the end of the uh, chain of handballs was McAuliffe, who really couldn't get a handle on it under pressure as a consequence of the pressure from Jared Marshall. And there'll be a ball up 40 metres out from the Tigers' goals. Laura Cowley just tried to grab it out of the ruck. Squeezed a handball out to a dangerous spot. Bailey comes in to close. Jacobson's been good early. Handball's over his shoulder. Nobler will snap around the body. And there's your Zambrero goal of the day for sure. Nathan Nobler's got two. Yeah, it's a great goal there by Nobby. And uh, it was a great little setup there by the Tigers too. One thing that I really do like is they're just their attack at the ball uh, inside 50 at the minute. Um, it's only early stages, but some really good signs there too. And having Hearn down, down uh, deep in their goal square just gives it a different avenue. Ball comes to ground. It's blokes like players like Noblet and McDonald who will really reap the benefits of that. And the margin back to 12 points, and we're at the three-minute mark of this second quarter. The Carpet Country scoreboard, Maul now 3-7-25, trailing Druin 6-1-37. So an old-fashioned shellacking <laughs> at quarter time from coach to players at this stage has worked wonders. Two early goals in the opening three and a half minutes of this second quarter. Whack now feeds it off. This time, can he find Cody McDonald? He can. He overruns it, though, opens the door, and a good pick-up, too, by Quirk. Kick towards goals. Goes off the side of the boot towards the right forward pocket. Race is on players. Can they avoid Gee, the boundary? Good. They can. Nicely done it was too by Boyd Bailey. A handball over the top. McDonald. Cody Todd's going to get a handball off, but he over he overcooked it a little bit. And now on the end of it for Druin is going to be Noah Jarrett. He's taken ball and all towards the boundary. The umpire's going to have to come in, surely, yes. And just outside the Ford 50 for Druin with the boundary just a metre away will ball this one up Morwell 3-7 Drew and 6-1 four and a half minutes gone second quarter and Musil grabs it out of the ruck then dropped it the umpire said play on good work by Quirk this is Kai Quirk gave it try to handle off to Aiden Quirk his brother just left it behind Whack quickly came in and then one of the Quirk boys, I think it's Kai, who wrapped him up in a strong tackle. Tyler Brown's been a great uh, boxer, hasn't he, across that half-back line? Sensational. He's just got great poise as well. Yep. He uses the ball well. So, again, Bethune and Musil. We'll give it to Musil, but Bethune got a handle out forward of the pack. It goes to Klebney. Kick around his body was partially smothered. Makepeace took on the tackler there of Marshall. Let's it go. It's in a dangerous spot. Back there is Jared. Now, quick kick by Marrick as they cross the face of goal. For Druin, and it goes out of bounds on the full. Scott looks like uh, young Jared for Druin's uh, spent a fair bit of money on some hair product uh, <laughs> yeah. during the week, but he's got the two tone peroxide in his hair. I'm not sure how you have mullet. Blonde and white in your hair. Yeah, well, he's had a fair go at it. Well, Walsh chipped it in over the top to Taylor Weatherall. He kicks down the line towards Nobs at the target. No, no, no. Goes over his head, though. Salter was able to spoil it. He could have nearly marked in the end, but we've got a boundary throw in. 80 metres around. From Druin's goal, the margin sits at 12 points. Scar, just quickly around the grounds, thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture, Gippsland, Terrell, and they are trailing Sale by two points. Warrigal are trailing Maffa by 13 points. All right, left half forward flank, Druin in, into attack, and they aren't able to burst through that forward 50. A quick kick forward by Tyler Brown. He's been busy for the first 35 minutes of this game. He'll need to be busy for the next 55 too, because game on it is. The home side trailing by two straight kicks. They've had 10 opportunities to, at goal and only converted three so let's see if they can't edge a bit closer Wack gets a tap can't find a teammate drawn around the corner from Shiv goes towards the left half foot float tank and high free kick Brandon McAuliffe will ease the pressure for the Tigers comes in board he's got Carlson all in his own in the middle ground hits him in stride 80 metres lowers the eyes and chisels one hits him on the target on the lead is Brandon McDonald takes the mark and he's 45 degree out the margin sits at 12 currently but the Tigers have been impressive in the first six minutes of play. Boxer? He times his leads really well, Brandon McDonald, too. So he just gets that little bit of uh, gap between him and his player. And uh, well, now he needs to convert. He's had a couple of sighters. And now, after missing a few early ones, he puts that one through the middle. And the Tigers, they're full of running. They've got three in a row in this second quarter. And he continues on with uh, PC's uh, goal every game so far. So b gets his first goal of the afternoon. Uh, he continues on his merry way there. But uh, good lead up forward play there by Brandon McDonald but it was great play there by the, the midfield of Morwell to move the ball real quick inside 50 and that's how you do it uh, every day of the week and just one straight kick separating the team at the moment I mean one straight kick 6 
137, Druin on the Carver Country School Board, Mall 4, 731. Wack gets the tap, can he find a teammate? He can, but that teammate's been found by two or three Druin players. Brandon McAuliffe was a player who was on the end of the Wack tap. And Wack will go, take two, get another tap. No beat, do it on this occasion by Bethune, ground level, nicely done. Off they go, it's Archie Grant, finds a teammate. Well, it handballs to the advantage, some good pace by both players. Cohen Campbell was run down, you won't see that too often, but you did right then. Nice work by Druin, and they're under pressure, the Morwell side. All of a sudden, Druin sensed that the occasion needs something special, and a player with the ball at the moment, Josh Shiv, keeps ground, keeps possession towards the half, oh, or in fact, towards the centre wing position, grandstand side, and fighting hard at ground level. Uh, and eventually winning the ball too was... Archie Grant. Archie Grant kicks around the ball, uh, kicks the ball around the body, and he does it nicely. More well into attack, they got some numbers, but Druin are equal to the task at this stage. Free kick behind plays, being paid. Cody McDonald's a player, plays on quickly. The kick not oh. great. Fortuitously <laughs> <laughs> falls in the arms of Noblet, who'll kick and attempt to put the Tigers dead set even with this visiting Druin side who appear at the moment to have stopped in the eight minutes of this second quarter. Just, just to let you know as well, Poppy, that uh, Archie Grant has changed his jumper number to 24. Thank you. That's, That's why you're confused. Fraction concerned, yep. As Nathan Noblet directly in front will come in from about 45 metres he'll kick from. He got crosses the 50, left foot shot, and it goes away across the face of goal. He's just tugged it, and it's a minor score. And that brings him inside a goal. It's five-point margin in Druin's favour at the nine-minute mark of the second quarter. The Carver Country scoreboard reading Druin 6-1-37, Maul now 4-8-32. So Jordan Kingy, who's been very good at bringing this ball in and finding a teammate, you'll notice there's no or very few players inside defensive 50. Some set plays they're working with have worked early in this game. Can they work again? They go towards yep. the outer side and they've worked it well. Nicely done. Tim Hancock's on the end of it. From outside defensive 50, is He's got Clayton Kingy, so there's been only uh, one player in between the two Kingies, and now they're threatening their forward 50 on the end of it. Nicely done. A tap off the ground it was by Jared to the advantage he hoped of a teammate. It wasn't, because Moyle all of a sudden got a few Tigers around the ball, and they're running it out of defensive 50, or they're attempting to run it out of forward uh, defensive 50. Brown eventually was one of the few players that assisted them to find some space, and a beautiful kick towards the corner oh. was dropped, and now, take two, they've got Good some effort. room now to move, and on the end of this one is going to be Jacobson handballs it off to Wack, is, can they find a winner 20 metres out, they can't Noblet comes in, runs over the ball, throws oh, stolen. Players, stolen and now Jacobson's going to be the player of Brandon McDonald, it's going to be Brandon McDonald who gets the Tigers in front can you believe it, the guy was dead and buried at quarter time, and the Tigers have come back to life, you know, it's, it's the old good old spray, and, you know, Dennis Knight's probably one of those coaches that doesn't berate players very often and I think when he does he wakes up the souls of the players because they know that he's fed income and he was pretty uh, pretty all right there at quarter time too. One thing about Brandon McDonald, he loves the goals so you know that when he gets the ball in his hand he's going to give every opportunity to get these Tigers in front and he's done it again this quarter. That's his second goal for the quarter. Well, it's certain, it'll certainly be one spray that he won't have to apologise for, that's for sure anyway. Uh, unlike the North Melbourne coach. <laughs> uh, one point lead to Maul at the 11 minute mark of the second quarter. Carpet Country School the Tigers 5-8-38, Druin 6-1-37. It's, great, it's just quickly a great little handball by Brad Bird as well. Oh, set that goal up, was it? Yeah, yeah. picked it up. It was a, a neat little handball it was. with traffic, wasn't it? Sure was. We'll get to him around the ground scores in a moment. Boxer is back to the middle of the ground. Whack got high and, well, he got a handle on it, but Bethune did well. In there was Quirk. And Quirk's been uh, thrown all around the ground this afternoon. That's Kai I talk of as well. As we've got a secondary stoppage, 11 minutes into this quarter, as we said, the Tigers are banged on four goals and they now lead it as they trail by 25 points at quarter time. Tyler Brown off the back of this stoppage. No, not going anywhere. Boxer, over to you. Quarter time scores in the mid Gippy MDU are four point leaders over Newborough. Foster, big leaders uh, over Stony Creek by 18 points. It's a draw against Tarwin and Moore, at least 20 apiece. Fish Creek, Trail Blower by 6 points. And Hill End are big leaders against Thorpe Dull. Well, free kick goes towards Tyler Brown. He'll get 50 metre penalty as well. The man on the mark will be at about the top of the 50. And Wack just looks to be hobbling a little bit from that contest. As Tyler Brown looks up. 
plenty of forwards. Movement. Yeah, plenty there is. Movement. There's a spare man there, I thought. Yeah. Well, he's it was shot. one of those. He's too far out, you'd think. He's but he thought. runs around. He gets to 51 and he hooks it. It's going to go to the last side. Noblet, is it in the field of play? No, the umpire said it's over. It's a minor score on your uh, Cup and Country scoreboard. 5-9-39 Mall, leading Druin at 6-1-37. Big moments are brought to you by, Monas, uh, by Mall Bowling Club this afternoon. Pot and Palmer night every Saturday night from 5.30. Only $20 tonight. Kingy brings the ball back into play, as he's done for most of the day. Finds a teammate. Again, Tim Hancock goes along the line. On the uh, last occasion, Kingy got on the end of it. Guess what? Kingy gets on the end of it again, but he hasn't got the room to move. He had a moment ago, and more are starting to close down all the avenues for the Druin side to go forward and, in fact, make the most of their opportunities. They've turned a deficit of nearly five goals into a lead of two points. Kai Kirk is one of the players around the ball at the moment. It spills inside Ford 50. I reckon he may overrun it. He did and more now inside Ford 50. Feet it off. A quick kick forward. Can they find? They can. Noblet. Nicely done by Lachlan McDonald. A short kick to the lead. Noblet, who's been presenting very well for most of this game, will get an opportunity. The right footer will kick uh, from the wrong side of the ground, if you know what I mean, because he's got the boundary to his right side and only a metre to his right side. So, unlike they do at the next level, he won't kick around the body. He will kick straight at goal with his <laughs> left, left leg. He obviously can kick both feet, or I didn't know that he was a left footer. I I reckon we might go with the second option. McDonald's <laughs> kick for goal was just off line and got a point. Mall now leading by three points. They have 5 10, 40 on the Carpet Country scoreboard. Druin 6 1 37. So Druin bring it back into the field of play. Harry Wands has been okay for him. Chips it out wide. Finds a teammate who comes in board to Clayton Kingy. It's slow, but it needs to be. They need to take the tempo out of this game. Because they trail by three points at the moment. Kingy, does he find a target? No, he'll turn it over. There should be a free kick there. I would have thought. It wasn't paid. He got hacked down by one arm. And that was Walsh we're talking about. No free kick. Ball up. Far side of the ground. Bethune will take the ruck duties. Musil, though, got his hand on it. Whack put a strong tackle on Hancock. And we'll have another ball up. So, again, Musil and Bethune Musil again comes to ground level. Working hard was Quirk at there as well. Riley Lopez was at ground level trying to get a, a handball out. Musil also putting in a strong tackle. We've got another stoppage, top of the 50. And we're in the second quarter of Gippsland Live. Great to have you covered. You want a, a beautiful Saturday afternoon that it is. 15 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Working it out there nicely was Aiden Quirk, who kicks to the wing area, but it's going to come back as Walsh takes the uncontested mark for the Tigers. So the outer side wing true position, the outer side wing at the moment Moral up by three points 15 minutes gone, he goes along the line, can he find Musil, that was a target Musil got hands to it, couldn't rip it down the pressure around him was a little bit too much the umpire will take control right half forward flank Morwell kicking to the left of your radio, the Clubhouse end, the city end. City end. Uh, and legends, yeah. legends bar end. Legends bar end. There's plenty of legends that have come out of this club, that's for sure. Thank you. Uh, Scud, <laughs> you were one of them. What about you, Nick? Were you one of them as well? No. He had many clubs, but this wasn't one of them. <laughs> no, the fee was too high. <laughs> and they did a quick calculation on expected return on money. <laughs> and was going to lose. And I uh, found that they... If they went without him, they could build a new clubhouse <laughs> and win premierships. There's drawn go forward now. Nicely done to Hancock. Outside 50. Oh, well done. Kingy tried to get rid of his direct opponent. Couldn't. So now Morwell will ease the pressure and they'll do it through James Jacobson, who was forward early. And now he goes through Cody McDonald in front of our TRFM commentary position. Noblet continues to back himself in with presenting that kick poor. Oh, the mark was spilt. But enough opportunity to clear the area for Druin and find a teammate in front of our commentary position. A mark was taken by Campbell Jolly, and he would be happy with that too. He goes in board, finds Aiden Quirk right in the middle of the ground. They can square it up further if they want to, and now they do. And it lands in the hand of Bethune, who can get it out wide towards Kai Quirk. His little neat kick to yep. Clayton Kingy. They're outside 50, though. You'd think that he might be a little bit too far out to score. He puts it, no. We're going to have a 50 metre penalty. Oh my goodness. Uh, As they're saying, on. I think the Tigers are saying one umpire called play on. The other one said, no, I didn't. 
It doesn't matter in the end because it'll be a 50 metre penalty. Clayton Kingy will go back and will chip it over the top from point blank range. And it's just what they needed to get the score back. And they take the lead now at the 17 minute mark of this second quarter box. Yeah, it's just that skill error by Noblet then to be ruined that uh, kick that came in. It was nearly, uh, nearly came off for him too, but they uh, heard him back on the turnover. And Drew just got that much needed goal they needed this quarter as well, just to hold off Maul, albeit by only three points. And uh, Druin take that lead back, and we've played 18 minutes into the second quarter. The Carpet Country scoreboard, Druin 7-1-43, leading Maul 5-10-40. Clayton Kingy has three goals for the afternoon now after kicking that one. And exactly as Boxer said, they well, certainly needed that at the 18-minute mark of this second quarter. So Musil and Bethune in the middle of the ground of the two Ruckman. And this time again, Musil taps it to that hit zone. But reading it nicely there was yep. Shiv, who threw the football after he gathered it and gave it to Lopez as a free kick. He wheels and goes, plays on. The target is Brandon McDonald. He can elevate and mark, can't quite get on the second mark, but he got pushed or shoved or over the shoulder, chopping of the arms, yeah. whatever it was, yeah, boxer. Over the shoulder. Yeah, free kick. Over the shoulder. That's, what, that's the beauty about playing in front. He's, he can test really well, Brandon McDonald, as well. So he just needs to convert this one. He's third for the quarter. Uh, it'll be a great effort if he can finish it off. Big moments for all. Morwell Bowling Club, Brandon McDonald comes in, likes it off the boot, he's already celebrating, now it goes through and now the goal umpire says all clear it's, it's just, it's one of those things there too, Scott, I've just watched Noblet and now McDonald, they just seem to be kicking under the ball and they're just not giving it enough space between them and the, the man on the mark, just to give enough penetration through so they can get more lift on that ball, but anyway, it was a great finish and uh, he's third for the quarter and it's taken Maul back into the lead. So it's third lead change this quarter. Three-point lead to Maul at the 19-minute uh, mark of the second quarter. Carpet Country scoreboard, Maul 6-10-46. And Druin R7-1-43. Centre break's important. Game in the balance. Musil gets the tap. Can't find a teammate. Oh, gee, trying quick hands, but not finishing it off. As LaPraise, can he find a teammate? He can't. The umpire will come in. And there'll be a ball up. Left half forward flank. Maul into attack. So the ball spilled out from that centre bounce, about 20 metres Morwell's direction. Musil gets a tap, nicely done too, finds Laprise. Laprise kicks to within 20, oh. 25 me maybe. Here he goes nicely again. Nicely taken, quick kick around the body by, don't tell me, he's done it. Number four and a quarter, he's on fire, he's red hot. Brandon McDonald, I tell you what, if the uh, Zambrero goal of the day was because of the numbers, <laughs> he'd be leading. Box up. Wow. He, he loves the celebration, doesn't he? He loves the old celebration, b -back. So you know, you know exactly when he's got it. I did turn the mic off so I could cough. Daryl, I just didn't turn it back on. But uh, a great goal. Four for the quarter is a magnificent effort. <laughs> And it's a nine-point lead to the Tigers at the 20-minute mark of the second quarter. They are 17-52, Druin 7-1-43. One job. Yeah. Are we going to quarter time I, I score, Boxer? Quarter time score from Lee and Gaffer. And get this one, Poppy. Lee and Gaffer, 6 3 39 to Murray, just the two points. <laughs> Well, we've got a good game on our hands here. Nine points is the margin. Again, Musil got it down. McAuliffe's been busy in the middle of the ground. Right foot kick goes towards the top of the 50. Lachlan McDonald's his target, but Salter will take the mark coming the other way. See, as Reece Salter now finds his teammate in Ryan Marrick. See what I started? As Marrick, inside 45 kicks neat to Josh, Josh Shiv. And we've had it approved by the family that Josh Shiv is okay. Not quite his full name, but Shiv is what he's going with as he puts it towards half forward. All numbers favour the Tigers. And Max Linton, who's had a 12-minute, 15-minute spell on the pine for punching, is back on the ground. Gave it to Tyler Brown. He's been busy. Noblet. Beautiful kick to Noblet on the wing who yep. presents. Oh, the no. run was on. They didn't give it, which was good. As Noblet then kicks it to the second yep. option. Ahern goes up. Can't quite mark it. Working hard back with Joe Collins for the Hawks. He's at defensive 50. Gives it to Jordan Kingy. He wants the inboard 45 kick. Finds it nicely done. And finds Seth Calway. It's about Drew, and they, they do like to use that corridor, don't they? They really do that punch 45 inside every opportunity they get. So Calway, again, exactly what you said, goes in board to Aidan Quirk, went backwards to hand to Jordan Kingy. He's under pressure. He's coughed the handball up. They're in there's all sorts of trouble now is Aidan Quirk. He's got to fight and fight. And he had two Tigers tackling him, and the umpire said ball up. So it's a good result by the Hawks. 
Margin sits, nine points, 22 minute mark of the second quarter. Okay, Musil gets the tap down, can't fight a team up. We've said that a few times today, but they are getting their hands on the ball. This time it's Aiden Quirk who kicks towards centre half forward for the visiting side. Musil battles up nicely. This time he finds a uh, teammate and he finds him beautifully too. Can't pick the player. Uh, McCall, if it was, McCall, he's been ping folding the ball. Yeah, he's uh, and nicely he's... tackled. I tell you what, he's been hurt in the tackle too. He's down on his haunches. Musil's a player with the ball who'll need to give it back shortly. I reckon he may be winded, the player with the ball. Good tackle. Josh Sheep called him a lot today. He's come grandstand side. The kick too much height means that Noblet can contest it. Noblet well wins done. it. Feeds off nicely to Zach Carlson. He runs himself into trouble. Noblet comes in to lend a hand. And finally, the umpire says, listen, you've got no room to move. I'll take control and ball this one up. Just fundamentals, isn't it? Just those little skill areas that are hurting more at the moment too. So Bethune knocked it down, working hard as Marshall, he had a good first quarter. McCall is still down in the middle of the ground yeah. too, Boxer. Yeah, I'll keep an eye on that. Thank you. Dr. Nick Lachino. Thank you. As Musil and Bethune do ruck duties, Musil again, Riley Lopez tried to hit the pack at pace and wasn't going away. I'll tell you what, Josh Shiv has been a good performer for the Hawks. He's uh, working hard in the midfield. Again, Musil got a handle on it. Jacobson was a uh, handball, just got picked off by Reese Solder. He took on one or two tacklers, got around those. Gave a handball off. Now, well, I'll tell you what, Harry Wands just coughed it up to Wack, and then Wack got tackled by Kingy. And sorry, it was Bethune, and uh, we'll have another stoppage. The Tigers are just up the pressure now, haven't they? You can see them hunting in numbers as well, which is a real good positive sign. They've just got to maintain this now. Musil again. Tapped it down. Wands may have got one over the shoulder. The umpire said, no, my ball. 15 hit-outs to Musil this quarter. Well, they do it again, and... Musil make it 16. Try to get it out towards Brown. Brereton with hands has been pretty good. Just missed Jacobson on that occasion. And Wands will want the boundary line, or in the end his teammate Shiv does. And we'll have a boundary throw in. About 70 metres around from the Tigers' goal. We're at the 24-minute mark of this first quarter. The Tigers have been on fire. Brandon McDonald's kicked four in the quarter, and they lead it by nine points after trailing by 25 at quarter time. A mutual contest. The ruck didn't get a clear tap on the ball. He's been tackled, though, clearly. Just outside the Ford 50. Grandstand side. Morwell's home ground. A big game this one, Moal v Druin. Moal wanting to threaten the top five, need a win. Druin wanting to stay in touch, also need the win. Morwell have a win. Oh. The handball by Musil was an absolute <laughs> shocker, but it fell in the arms of Carlson. Kicks to the top of the square, roving. Who's going to be the first player there? You'd expect it could be Brandon McDonald because he's been in everything this quarter. He's kicked four, as you heard Scud tell you. The ball still inside the forward 50 for Morwell, but again, no clear pathway through, so the umpire will take control. 30 metres from Morwell's goals 25 minutes gone of this second quarter in the first quarter Druin had six and Morwell won in this quarter Morwell have added six and Druin won <laughs> so as we speak they're wanting to make it seven are Morwell and they get their chance do they get dancing around nicely the player was I reckon it could have been Brad Brereton danced left danced right I tell you what, almost did the hokey pokey as well. He couldn't find a way out. Play on's the call. Uh, advantage, there top of the square. Oh. And I'll tell you what, he's done it again. Brandon McDonald, we were looking for him a few moments ago. He said, Poppy, here I am, right here. For goal number five, you don't see this too often. Five goals in a quarter. Oh, I did it many times in my day. You did too, Nick. <laughs> and a shout out to St Vincent's under 13. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brandon McDonald now from 20 metres out, a tight angle off the boot. He's got right. He's got. He's got five. Puts up the high five and he gets the high five from all of his teammates. Brandon McDonald and Morwell are absolutely on fire. I reckon Dad Steve will be absolutely fogging up that car at the moment if he's sitting there because <laughs> he'll be so excited about his son kicking his fifth goal for the quarter. And uh, this is what happens when you present. Okay, yep. so he continues to present, plays in front. He's got high confidence now too. So. A great combination there. Five goals is a huge effort, as we talked about, uh, in a quarter of footy. Taking Mobile to a 15-point lead at the 26-minute mark of the second quarter. Carbon Country scoreboard, the Tigers 8-10-58, leading Drew in 7-1-43. This is a, what's that, 40-point turnaround from hard quarter time. And McDonald's got five of them. Big moments. Zambrero goal of the days. You name it. McDonald's been on fire. Musil does some work in the middle of the ground. Again, he handled to himself on this occasion. That's twice in the last minute. 
Although it missed the target, so Hancock went and grabbed it. His kick was partially smothered, although it lands in the hand of Marshall. His cheap uh, little kick tip goes towards Kingy. Now Kingy goes towards uh, the forward line in Campbell Jolly. Gathered it, then got tackled. Play on to the umpire. The Tigers' defence are standing up at the moment. Tyler Brown goes to ground, and Kai and Aiden Quirk works hard. But the umpire says we'll ball it up. 27 and a half minutes gone. What a turnaround. What a game of football. As the two rucks will do battle about 30 metres out from Druin's goal. Wack got a hand on it. Carlson grabbed it and then got quickly tackled by Aiden Quirk and we'll do it again. Scud quickly just around the ground thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. The Giants by two points in the third quarter against the Lions and the Cats lead by 21 points over the Crows. OK, drawn to attack here at Morwell. Uh, they desperately need another goal to stay in touch. They're 15 points down. 27, 28 minutes gone. Boyd Bailey eases the pressure, goes towards the outer side and finds Taylor Weatherall who goes inboard. Can he find a teammate? He can. It's Brad Brereton. He's been half busy. Oh, look at him here. I'll tell you what, there's some space here. He can just about run this one down and take it. Clearly, the player is Cohen Campbell Got from it. Oh, here we go. McDonald, can he get on the edge of it? He can't. He, he Take just, him off. <laughs> it was just that kick was a little, he just held onto it just a little bit too long because he had a lot of space between his opponent, McDonald, there too, but it just sat up in the air too long. Oh, there's a bit of claret coming off the ground here. Yeah, Josh Shiv, he's been in everything. He's been sent off. He's been picking up possessions at will. And now he's got claret coming out of, well, every hole in his head. As the ball comes back into the field of play, Porakali was there, will quickly snap, and McDonald is it? Oh, he's he got a free it. kick. He's paid the There's mark. There's a free kick. Has he paid the mark? He's yeah. paid the mark. He's gone about 12 metres. Hasn't even made the 15 metre mark. Well, Brandon McDonald's got five in the quarter. <laughs> when you're on, you are you're on. on. <laughs> and right on the halftime siren, the Tigers lead it by 15 points at halftime at the moment, but Brandon McDonald... Take a hat off, son. It's been your quarter. You've kicked five, and now you've kicked six in the quarter. They trail by 25 points at quarter time, and they now lead by 21, the Tigers. What a turnaround. Brad McDonald, six goals in a half. They lead by 21. We need a break. We need to take a breath. It's Gippsland Live on TRFM. All thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. I might be able to get the sandwiches now. <laughs> The Morning Crew with Gabby and Dan. Remember those little girls, Sophia, Grace and Rosie, who performed Nicki Minaj on Ellen and went super viral? Well, they're back as grown-ups. Oh, you got my heart running away. Beating like a drum and it's coming away. Sophia, Grace and Rosie now have their own music out. So you can uh, check it out on Spotify if you wish. Thankfully these days you don't buy albums. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. The Morning Crew with Gabby and Dan. Weekday mornings from 6. TRFM. At Harvey Norman, get 60 months interest free, no deposit finance from Latitude, and receive a bonus gift card up to $1,000. Shop furniture, bedding, computers and technology, TVs and entertainment and more. That's 60 months interest free, no deposit, no interest from Latitude with 60 approximately equal monthly payments and receive a bonus gift card up to $1,000. Finance only available if you have or are approved for a participating Latitude credit card. Minimum finance to not $1,000. CTs and Cs. Interest applies for non-compliance. Fees and product exclusions apply. Now at Harvey Norman. Soon, your next Macca's run could do more than fix your hunger. It could win you a share of almost $4,000. We want you to drive through for cash. Simply head to the drive through at your local McDonald's Gippsland restaurant, scan the QR code when it's safe to do so, and get your name into the draw to win the daily cash giveaways. drive through for cash. Coming soon. Thanks to McDonald's Gippsland restaurants and TRFM. For family medical care, visit Sale Medical Centre. Find them at 73 Pearson Street, Sale, in the blue and white building next to Todd's Chiropractors. Sale Medical has five doctors on site as well as allied health specialists forming a team of qualified healthcare providers supported by caring practice nurses and friendly administration staff. Sale Medical Centre also has bulk billing available to children under 16 and concession card holders. For more info, visit salemedical.com.au or call 5144 5766. <laughs> 
country tailor, building on decades of experience, sourcing tiles from all over the world that condensed all of their knowledge into a stunning new contemporary showroom. The stunning tiles can source from only the finest suppliers that have something for everyone, and with special orders and almost limitless buying power. Soon to be Gippsland's exclusive home of women. The only limitation is your imagination. Drop in to see them at Argyle Street, Tarelgan. Comedy Tire Service. They can tie as you for the name when they can break deals. Get it again, we got Cooper tires the four wheel drivers. Fit up, you drive away. So have a good day. Comedy Tire Service and you safely on your way. We like to say, oh, have a good day. Comedy Tire Service. The sound of the Mongol Bowling Club Bistro. Today is Pot and Palmer Night. Choose from the selection of yummy Palmer toppings. Only $20 every Saturday from 5.30 p.m. In a pot, soft drink, or a glass of wine. To make a booking, phone the club on 5134-3449. 52 Hazelwood Road Mall. Visit the website mallwellbowls.com.au for other specials during the week. Zambero's new big burrito is so big, it'll crush any hunger. Loaded with double filling and double rice, it's sure to leave you satisfied. Head down to Zambero Taralgan today. Available for a limited time only, Zambero. Feel good next. It's Fun Night Save Royd House Quad Tech Sale. Emerald Hill Satin Quilt Cover Set Queen Bed, $29. VIP save 50% off all Everest bedding and 50% off all towels. So you can shake it, make it and dry it for less. See you on now. Exclusions apply at Spotlight. It's what you make it. Now, a look at the cold highlights. It's live on TRFM. Bailey will step on his left. And then getting his Zambrero goal and I contender as well. One minute 22 into the second quarter. Lloyd Bailey. He's had a couple of sizes. And now, after missing a few early ones, he puts that one through the middle. And the Tigers, they're full of running. They've got three in a row in this second quarter. The oh, stolen. Stolen. And now Jacobson's going to be the player of Brandon McDonald. It's going to be Brandon McDonald who gets the Tigers in front. Can you believe it? The guy was dead and buried at quarter time. And the Tigers have come back to life. Brandon McDonald comes in, likes it off the boot. He's already celebrating. Now it goes through. And now the goal umpire says all clear. Oh. And I'll tell you what, he's done it again. Brandon McDonald, we were looking for him a few moments ago. He said, Poppy, here I am, right here. The goal number five, you don't see this too often. Five goals in a quarter. Uh, I did it many times in my day. You did too, Nick. <laughs> and a shout out to St. Vincent's under 13. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Brandon McDonald now from 20 metres out, a tight angle off the piece. He's, he's got He's got He's got five. Puts up the high five and he gets the high five from all of his teammates. Brandon McDonald and Norwell are absolutely on fire. I reckon he's got a miss snap and McDonald is it? Oh, he's, he's got a free it. kick. He's paid the With mark. a free kick. Has he paid the mark? He's yep. paid the mark. He's gone about 12 metres. Hasn't even made the 15 metre mark. Well, Brandon McDonald's got five in the quarter. When you're on, you are you're on. on. <laughs> Gippsland Live on TRFM. This is the Halftime Wrap. Oh, yeah, it's the Halftime Wrap, all right. Gee whiz, second quarter. Well, it was all the Tigers. Drew and led at quarter, by, quarter time by 25 points. And then the Tigers, they come out absolutely firing, kicking eight goals to one. And Brandon McDonald kicks six of those on his own. And now they lead by 21 points. The Tigers are 9 10 64. Drew and a 7 1 43. And I tell you what, not many players have kicked more than five or six goals in a quarter boxer, except for you, because we just heard in the highlights. Yeah, Poppy, spot on. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. What a quarter, what a game, what a half. Yeah, it was too, yeah. Morwell showed what they're capable of when they move the ball quickly and give their key forwards both Noblet and McDonald. McDonald gets a lot of the credit, and surely he deserves that on the back of his six goals, but Noblet was being, has been presenting as well. And what I like about that, it then just spreads the defence of... Druin so well, Noblet going one direction, McDonald finding himself at worst in a one-on-one -on -one contest, but more often than not, 
to a uh, leading to a, a, a midfielder that's finding him and he's still got to finish him off and he's finished them off beautifully Brandon McDonald today prior to today he had 16 goals he's up to 22 goals which puts him second wow. on the goal kicking list alongside Harry Pepper and just a few behind Brett Eddy obviously we need an update on how those players are going today but you heard that Moe are in trouble at Lee and Gather, so Pepper might not be a problem but Eddie probably will be. It's been a good game of footy, uh, but now the pressure's on Druin. Let's face it, in the first 30 minutes, Druin applied the pressure. More well responded. Now we're back at half time. It's a chance for the coaching staff or the visiting side to do probably what Morwell did and find something in this next 30 minutes. Remembering, of course, that those scores, I think all but two goals have been scored to the left of the radio, to the clubhouse end. Yep, I correct. reckon. Spot on. Yeah, so it's it's for no apparent reason. <laughs> no. I tell you, for no apparent reason, but I think 14 goals of the 16 scored, or something like those, have been kicked to one end of the ground. Well, very good uh, summation of a half a football there, Poppy. Let's get some other scores uh, during the halftime wrap here at Mowell and around the grounds today, all thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. And don't forget, you can upgrade to an Australian-made mattress or ensemble. The leading Aussie brand, all at Harvey Norman Furniture Gippsland. Here's Nick Lacano. Yeah, thanks there, Scott, man. Uh, we've had a big, a bit of a blowout already down at Lee and Gaffer. You That's, predicted this. Yeah, I did. Lee and Gaffer, 12, 6, 78. They lead probably 2, 4, 16 at half time. So Flexing their muscles, aren't yeah, they, the Parrots? Really uh, putting the stranglehold on the Mubby uh, lines at the moment. Terralgan, 6, 12, 48. They lead sale by 10 points, 6, 2, 38. Warrigal, 4, 4, 28. They've gone asleep. Mafra, 9, 4, 58. So 30 point leaders there, Mafra. And one Thaggy. 8654 to Bansdale 3422. So um, continue on with Mid Gippsland, round seven action of Mid Gippsland football. Got a few there too. Scud, Newborough 7850, MDU 4832, Foster 6541, they lead Stony Creek 2517. In a close one down in South Gippsland, Tarwin 4832, they lead Morley's 3523. Fish Creek 7547 to Ballara 4428. And Yanar 10565, they lead Tura 128. Nick comes to you this afternoon thanks to carpet country helping dreams become a reality since 1981 and here's paul carter thanks to gippsland Azusa ute and the ute d-max key stats in a half of football well where is the stats are fairly even in the first quarter it's heavily <laughs> 50 to 6 that quarter. They lead that 29 17 to half time. The clearances more went 12 8 and they lead that 19 15. Centre clearances that quarter 5 1 Mall's way. They lead that 8 5. The free kicks have gone 13 to Mall, 6 to Druin to the halfway mark. The marks are 36 to Mall, 37 to Druin. Contested marks Mall have that 10 4. Marks inside 50, it's 15 to the halfway mark. There's a lot of marks inside 50 to Mall. They, their forward line certainly is functioning well 15 marks inside 50s to five set shots today three goals five and one out in the full from Mall from set shots five goals straight from Druin the overall the turn the score overall score from turnovers Mall have kicked seven eight and two goals two from stoppages uh, Druin have kicked five one from turnovers and two goals straight from stoppages thanks very much Paul there are all the team stats we'll get to some individual ones when we get back from the break of the halftime wrap third quarter action is coming up after the break all thanks to McDonald's you're listening to Gippsland live on TFM right across Gippsland and the Valley and it's all thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. Soon, your next Macca's run could do more than fix your hunger. It could win you a share of almost $4,000. We want you to drive through for cash. Simply head to the drive through at your local McDonald's Gippsland restaurant, scan the QR code when it's safe to do so, and get your name into the draw to win the daily cash giveaways. drive through for cash. Coming soon. Thanks to McDonald's Gippsland restaurants and TRFM. Do you feel it? Confidence, the reassurance, building a new home, and the process is clear the whole time. It leaves you free to explore every possibility, free to enjoy every moment, every memory. Because at every stage, your builder is there, offering peace of mind. That's the GJ way. GJ Gardner Homes. Feel the joy building. You hit the road early, it's a long drive, and you're starting to get a little weary from the sun in your eyes. Driving tired can have the same effect as driving drunk. 
If you've been on the road for two hours, take a 15-minute break. Stop in at the nearest McDonald's restaurant in Gippsland. It's the perfect place to stop. You can stretch your legs, enjoy a coffee from the cafe, or grab a quick snack. A 15-minute break every two hours could help save your life. Another road safety message from McDonald's Gippsland. Road safe and Gippsland's own TRFM. The Isuzu D-Max is born to live. Three and a half ton towing, you can bring all the toys. Get off road and play with 4x4 Terrain Command and a rear diff lock. And rock out with Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. Plus, with a 5-star AirCap safety rating, the 3 liter turbo diesel Isuzu D-Max is born to live. Test drive today at Gippsland Isuzu Ute on the Princess Highway to Elgin, LMCG 10285. Australian-made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Mattresses and ensembles from the leading Australian brands. Lounge furniture and dining room furniture built for the family life. With a great selection of options in fabric, leather, size and shape. Create your own bedroom furniture. Customise your bed height, fabric or timber stain. Let our experienced team help you design furniture to suit your home. Harvey Norman, supporting Australian-made manufacturing. Australian-made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Go, Harvey, go. What do David Attenborough and Furbank Grammar School have in common? They both support the Marine Mammal Foundation, teaching children to help the planet and protect Melbourne's endangered barren and dolphins. Furbank Grammar School is Australia's most sustainable, forward-thinking school. From recycled and organic uniforms to green energy, we educate through science, adventure and a positive mind frame. Book a tour now for Year 7, 2023. Furbank Grammar School. Connections that last a lifetime. Hi, I'm Rosie from Virtue Homes. Are you thinking of building in 2022? I'm Tanya, and we are so excited to tell you that we have won the Victorian Display Home of the Year. The Acura 38 Display Home is located at Copeland's Road, Warragul, and is still open for viewing. We also now have our first nomination for Master Builders Australia. Keep an eye out in 2022. Our Display Homes in Terralgan and Warragul will be open Wednesday to Sunday, 11 to 4. So come and be inspired. Virtue Homes, CDBU 48113. Soon, your next Macca's run could do more than fix your hunger. It could win you a share of almost $4,000. We want you to drive through for cash. Simply head to the drive through at your local McDonald's Gippsland restaurant, scan the QR code when it's safe to do so, and get your name into the draw to win the daily cash giveaways. Drive through for cash. Coming soon. Thanks to McDonald's Gippsland restaurants and TRFM. Introducing the Australiano from the cafe, their best ever coffee blend with chai and native water seed. This is the third quarter, Gippsland Live on TRFM. They got this third quarter underway pretty quickly and drew in while they won the clearance. They got it a half forward and Timmy Hancock's been very good. And they need this as Ryan Marrick goes back. The halftime margin sits at 21 points. And welcome back here to more Rec Reserve as in it comes Ryan Marrick directly in front inside 30 seconds and misses away to the far side. On the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard, the Australiano coffee now in McDonald's made with the best ever McCafe coffee blend with chai and native wattle seed. Coffee fit for an Aussie. 7-2-44, Druin, trailing more who are 1964. All right, the ball comes back into play, and it's uh, Tyler in Boyd Bailey, in fact, that brings it back into play. I've got an interesting stat. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. I look forward to that. I really do. As uh, now Tyler Brown goes towards the outer side of the ground. Can he find a teammate he can't well, out of play on the full? I don't know if it's a stat, but there's only there's been 15 goals being kicked to the city end, and yes. one down here to the highway. Two. <sighs> totally. I, I'm, you give me a headache sometimes, Nick. Uh, the ball comes inside Ford 50. Good, strong mark by the Tigers' defence. And the player, we think, is Brandon McCall. He's oh. been pretty good today. The oh. kick, he gave Grant, kept possession. It's put his team under pressure. They're equal to the pressure just momentarily. They give the ball up for a behind. The pressure was starting to build. Are you sure, too? Taylor Weatherall has it. Clayton King, he kicked one in the second for Druin. And the Tigers' James Jacobson got one in the first as Walsh... Gets it out to Jacobson. 
Defensive 50, nice little knee kick now to the Tigers away, using the football a lot better. To Noblet, who gave the handball back to Jacobson and ran on, sold a little bit of candy, had a little bit of company then from the Hawks, gave it back to Noblet, they get out of this one, and oh. Whack will just go over to the top of the Wax head. Here's Campbell, handball back nicely to Bailey, Bailey's chiseling kick, beautiful, guess who? He hasn't moved, Brandon McDonald, he got six in the quarter, he rolls from 50, lowers the eyes on this occasion, gets over the back from McDonald, that was Lachlan. And it went through for a minor score. Don't you just unload? You've got six and a quarter. Have another crack, Bob. No, he thought about it, I think. But then he had a man spare and he did the right thing, lowered that eyes. But unfortunately, couldn't find the target on that occasion. He's been good on six occasions in that second quarter. He had just joined us. Brandon McDonald turned his game on its head with six second quarter goals. And his side now leads by 20 points. A great effort by him as Harry Watts has the ball. Once. Well, once has the ball over the outer side of the ground. Can he find a teammate? He went searching for. Couldn't find Tim Hancock. More well now as a consequence of that poor kick. Have a chance to turn it over, but only momentarily because Harry Wands again feeds it off. Goes towards the half forward flank. Oh, out the back. I thought it could have been a good mark, but it wasn't. Play on. Nicely done too. It was Weatherall from left half back flank. The kick is a poor one though. And is that Wands again? Yep. Gets another touch. That's three in a minute. And he finds a target this time. The target he looked for a moment ago. Tim Hancock plays on quickly. He's got two players inside forward 50, but uh, unfortunately there was a tiger between the two and he uh, uh, stopped it and now holds the ball in and the umpire will have to take control. Tell you what, James Jacobson yep. has been good for the Tigers. Yeah, just his run off half back's been really good. He's poised in that as well, so he's had a good afternoon. Big tap there that time by Tim Hancock, won it for the Hawks, but uh, went straight in the hand of Musil. He nearly gave it away as throwing the ball. Bailey squeezed a handball nicely done to make peace. He'll switch the play, and it's going to come off beautifully as Walsh can just gather. He went backwards now to Linton, and he chipped one over the top to McAuliffe, and the Tigers get out of this one. They... Brandon McAuliffe, his kick was smothered. It might work in the end. Lands in the hands of Walsh. He's got a little bit of time. He's well composed for a youngster. Kicks down the line. Lachlan McDonald was the target. There's Campbell, close to the boundary line. Doesn't take it over. Has to go and get it again. Oh, Wong stuck the head and Noblet got him over the shoulder. The umpire said no. Drew and fans don't like it. Ball up right in front of the Mullwell coach's box. 20, uh, four minutes gone, sorry, third quarter, 20 point margin, free kick being paid. Should have been paid too, I thought anyway, but we thought Harry Wands again, nice uh, start to this third quarter, important one for the visiting side, they've given up a lead, but now they've got a chance to shorten the margin, which currently sits at 20 points, they go inside Ford 50, you're not going to do it hitting targets like that, especially when the man Dan Musial plays with the opposition, grabs the ball, again they change direction and find Blewett on the, well basically in front of the Morwell well goals, but they've gone from grandstand side to outer side, they're out towards the netball courts as Wack goes over the top and here they run, they're running the Tiger Army in numbers, Sam Walsh gets on the end of it and finds Bailey, Bailey again goes short and now the player with the ball is Cody McDonald from out of side wing, kicks inside forward 50 front of the pack, it's a Moorwell player doesn't mark it uh, initially, Brandon McDonald and then in an attempt to handball he's judged to have dropped the ball, the free kick will go the way of Aiden Kirk, defensive 50 goes towards the outer side, right half back flank and he's got a couple of targets to choose from Yeah, Collins was the one, went in board did Collins, by foot to Kingy, that's Jordan, nice little kick to Hancock they're on the wing, uh, the Hawks. He looks in board again. They like to do this, the Hawks. It wasn't on, so he had to handle over the top to Collins. And Collins then eventually gets boot into it. Coming across will be Linton, and he'll go up and take a strong mark. Contested, that is. And they'll switch it again. Carlson has it on the near side. He's got uh, Lopez working for him. Decides to kick it over his head. Probably should have gone to Lopez in the end. As Noblet had to fight in a contested battle. And letting it go over in front of us right here in the uh, grandstand is Aiden Quirk. And Noblet will roll back to his forward post. There's a little bit of deja vu from the first quarter. I could just see those mistakes again, those simple mistakes there by the Tigers. They're trying things, but uh, there's just that little bit of lack of skill level at the moment so far this quarter. So Wack gets the tap down, can't find a teammate. Coming through hard was Josh Shiv, as he's done for most of the day. Off with the blood rule second quarter. Off as a consequence, yellow card first quarter. You can sense the sort of game that he's playing today, and they need him to play. They need more players like Shiv, really fighting hard. Wack gets another tap, tries to chase down his own ruck work. He can't, the big man. Has, uh, Are you right? I think you're right, Pop. There's, Josh Shiv has uh, given absolutely everything today, 
Uh, he's crashing into the packs, but he just needs a few more to follow his lead. Yeah, you're right too, as Wack gets the ball down. Here they go. Kingy went without it, and now Wack gets another chance at it. Nicely done. Good hands it was by Brereton. Feeds it off. Can they get a goal here? They've got every chance. Laprise kicks to the top of the square. McDonald, one hand. Was he held? He was. Oh, my goodness. Was it McDonald? It's Hearn. It's Hearn. Ryan Hearn, the big man. Held with uh, one arm. He put one arm and contested the ball well. And now from just a few metres out on a fairly tight angle, only 45 degrees, I guess, should bring up the Tigers' 10th of the afternoon and lengthen that 20-point lead to 26. He kicks for goal. Guess what he does? He does exactly what he thought he might, and he gets his first of the afternoon as well. Yes, that quarter-time move to put Hearn, as we spoke about during that first quarter, is that just that different avenue. They've got Noblet, McDonald, and now Hearn. Hearn just, has just been competing ever since quarter-time, and uh, it just makes a massive difference. Rewarded with a free kick and a much-needed goal for the Tigers. And that takes Moore's lead out to 26 points on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. We played eight minutes into the third quarter and the Tigers are on 10-11-71, leading Druin 7-3-45. Yeah, they're certainly playing um, free-flowing football, are the Tigers. They just, uh, even around the contest, they're just moving it forward at all costs. And they, even if it's not pretty, they'll get it going. This time they don't even contest the ruck work, Druin. So Wack tapped it straight down to McAuliffe and then... Tried to flick a handball out. Yeah, Wack has to go again. Head over the football. Picked up there by Wands. Got it off to Marshall. He got a kick towards the half forward area where Klebney can mark. He turns around on the left foot. They present for him. A good strong mark by Campbell Blewett. <coughs> and Blewett will go back. Decides to handle off to Ty Tyler Brown. And he'll switch it up. They've got some open space. Campbell is the one. Ooh. Let's it bounce. He can gather it. He's got some jets, but he decided to kick in a little bit open space. Nicely done. And Brandon McAuliffe will mark. Wack presents to the wing. They've got some numbers in board. They go yes, there. Man. It doesn't get there. Picked off there by Marshall. Goes to the open side. Kingy can mark. And he'll go back and slow it up and have a shot on goal. There would have been at least five goals in that quarter, in that first quarter from turnovers from Morwell. And again, now we see it. This is the second time this quarter I can remember the turnovers have hurt Morwell. And uh, if Kingy puts this through, they'll be pretty disappointed, the Morwell boys. So yeah. Clayton Kingy, he has three. Of course, he'll come in. He must get this goal. They trail by 26 points to the Hawks. And it's a big moment for the Mall Bowling Club this afternoon as Clayton Kingy comes in to get it back to 20 and he pushes it. He's nearly missed everything he has in the end. And it was a contest on the boundary line in front of the Legends booth here at Mallow. It's a nice, cra nice crowd building in front of the bar there. And we'll have a boundary throw in 10 minutes in. Well, we've only had one goal scored in this quarter. As the ball comes back in, double hands it down was Musil. Had to do his own little groundwork. Hancock wrapped him up. We'll have a, another stoppage. Here's Rob Popperstein. So, um, 10 metres out from the drawn goals. The margin, as you heard, 26 points. Time, 10 minutes into this third quarter. They need to find the goals to the visiting side. They can't at the moment because Morwell's numbers around the balls are very, very good. Sam Walsh on the end. Can he find a teammate? He can. It's Cohen Campbell. Right half-back flank. They go inboard. This time it takes... Uh, it uh, oh. managed to take it off. But I tell you, the kick oh. from Wack went looking for Carlson. Couldn't find that player. They're taking some risks, small one, when they really don't need to, and as a consequence, now Druin through Salter are going to put some pressure on, and they do it nicely. The big man in Ryan Marrick has taken the mark, played on quickly. This should be a goal after the mark from Dan Klebney is taken, and it's taken nicely too. Are they doing a little bit too cute, Boxer? Yeah, I reckon they are. I just, I can see what they're trying to do, but when you kick to a 50-50, you know, and you're trying to switch to play, you're fraught with danger there, Scud. So here we go, Dan Klebney on the shortest of angles. Oh. Kick off the boots, terrible! Oh. And just when they need a goal, they get another behind, and that is inexcusable. Drew an hour up to 7-4-46 at the 25-point margin in Moore's favour on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard with the Tigers sitting on 10-11-71, 11 and a half played third quarter. Tyler Rowe plays on, the kick was partially smothered off the man on the mark, Sam Pratt dropped the mark and then they try and work it backwards. Uh, Bethune, one-two handball to Shiv but they leave it behind, Brereton got a handball out towards Noblet and I was happy to get him over the boundary line, allow the Tigers and the Hawks to reset. 11 and a half minutes, a bit of a shout out if I can to the Hillier family, oh. doing it hard up at Hamilton Island, listening to us on the beach at Hamilton Island at the moment. And a big happy birthday to Sue Hillier. Yeah, yeah turning 80, so happy birthday sister Sue, who turned 80.
I said 70. Oh, sorry, it's 60. I got confused. Can't wait to give Susie a big kiss next time oh. she's back in the valley. As, uh, and cheerio to Bruce Hillier as well. <laughs> I said, Tyler went up there as well, did he? Kiss in the cheek. Of yes, he did, and that's why he's missing this afternoon. Ah, okay. He's uh, missing because he's dedicated to his uh, mum's 60th birthday. So. A few more footballers up there too, actually, from what I hear. Is that right? They've gone up that way. Is that correct? There's some more players missing today? Uh, no, he'd be the only one. He would be the only one? Yep. Okay. As uh, Drew here on the wing, they went short, put pressure on Sam Pratt, who just had to cough the footy up in the end. McAuliffe tried to get a handball out. Nicely done there by Fraser. they got some run. Wands has been good. Left foot kick to the pocket. Marrick will fly! And fly high he did. Nice mark by Ryan Marrick. I like the way this guy moves. And have a look at him too. He's got the long blonde locks, the mullet, the bright yellow boots. And he goes back in front of the Legends booth, and I wouldn't be surprised if he puts it through, he'll point at him. As Marrick puts it on its way left, not coming back. And I think the Legends point at him. Taking Druin now to 7 5 47. It's a 24 point margin in Moore's favour. 10 11 71 at the 13 and a half minute mark on the McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard. So four straight goals. Oh. They need to be closer than that, you'd suspect, with 30 minutes to go. So the pressure's going to be on them to close the margin as Moore put the pressure on the visitors, running the ball out beautifully. They do through Cody McDonald from half back to half forward. Noblet, one hand, tries to take it with the next, but it's cut off by Druin. And all of a sudden, the last player on that pack will be Zane Atkins that holds the ball in. The spoil from Reece Salter on Noblet was a good one too. In front of our TRFM commentary position, Saturday afternoon, Gippsland Live, Scud Cooley, Nick Lachino, Paul Carter, yours truly, Rob Popplestone, calling the game of the day here between Morwell and Druin, and again, Cody McDonald gets onto it, handballs, no, does it nicely, the one-two, he's under pressure though, he found Laprise, who gave it back to him, and that is McDonald, Cody, he was taken over the line ball and all, and there'll be a boundary throwing grandstand side, centre wing. Walsh, uh, sorry, whack it is. And Bethune, give it to Bethune on that occasion. Only just. Handball out the back there was from Quirk. Nicely done to his brother Aiden. Got it down the line. This guy's a bit of a cult hero. Noah, J Jared, his kick to centre half forward. High it goes. Mutual comes the other way. Plays on and gave it to Carlson. They go inside forward 50. Working back was Collins. The loose man back there mopped it up. Gave a handball to uh, Hermison. And his kick out towards Collins, who ran on to Shiv. They Stopping handled. The yeah, it was. Good tackle by Cohen Campbell to stop the run. And they get it going back the other way, the Tigers. So, uh, sorry to keep uh. you up, Nick. <laughs> he hasn't had a platter of sandwiches for 30 minutes and he's starting to feel the pinch as more well there he is. apply the pressure. McDonald, handball over the top, left hand sweeping handball. Wax going to be the first player there. He's got room to kick around the body. He's got all the time in the world. He likes and it. guess what? He takes it and gets more well margin of lead out to five goals straight. So can I use the word concurrently in that <laughs> yes, message? Yes, something like that. No. <laughs> Please put it in a sentence, Boxer. That'd be good. Um, more, more of kick two goals concurrently. Is that right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> oh, gee, it's a stretch. It's not bad. <laughs> Up to you, Paul Carter. It's not good either. It is a match high lead for Maul of 30 points at the 15 minute mark of the third quarter. McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard reading Maul 11 11 77 to Druin 7 5 47. Well, uh, you've only kicked one goal since the 23 minute mark of the first quarter, have Druin. And it's been all the Tigers since then. Again, no one really got a handle on that one. Hancock works hard again. They put him in the rocket. He's won a free kick. There's Tim Hancock. You can play him back. That nearly would be 50 as Carlson grabbed it and then put it back on the ground. As Hancock plays on quickly. Kicks towards Ryan Marrick. Puts one hand out. Gathers it on the run. Kick will 49. Will go out of bounds on the full. I so get excited when he gets near the ball, Boxer. Ed Morris, can you tell me about what's happened to Ed? I uh, only plan to play uh, one or two games throughout the year. They'll pick and choose, so certainly not uh, part of this Drew inside. Uh, I think we might see him once at a stretch, maybe twice for the rest of the year. Work commitments or was just uh, I believe he's playing away, I think. He's up uh, north somewhere or working up north, up Darwin Way. As the Tigers bring it back in here, 16 minutes have passed in the third quarter. And then try to tap it forward. It was Linton in the end, but Hancock will repel this one and put it back to the top of the 50. Out the back, Clayton Kingy just worked his opponent underneath that one. Had a flying shot at goal. Last line of defence, Brandon McCall have got a handle on it. And only just got a fingernail to it and another minor score. And then McDonald's get playing scoreboard. 
Uh, five behind straight this quarter to Druin after their incredible accuracy. They are 7 6, more 11 11. So Cody McDonald's been busy in this quarter too. Gets another mark, a touch. Are you looking for Noblet? Noblet, I thought, interfered with his player. Play on to the call. And more well through numbers can work their way from half back. They start to surge the black and yellows in threes and fours. And plenty of time to find another man. The kick only went four metres, 4.5 maybe. But uh, Sammy Walsh thought it went. At least 15. Play on was the call. Nice tackle it was too by uh, by Noah Jarrett that opened the door, but only momentarily because Taylor Weatherall was taking the kick in the last line of defence. Coming towards the grandstand side. Got all the time in the world through McAuliffe to find Noblet on the lead, and Noblet just keeps that ball in the play. On the mark for Drew and he's Zane Atkins. Noblet looks inboard. Could do with a Probably, haircut too. Pop. Yeah, he could do, but it's better than the bun. He goes towards the Ford 50. <laughs> Can he find a winner here? Well, Atkins was his player. Uh, McDonald was the target. He got hands to it, couldn't grab it from one of the rare times today. And now Drew and through Quirk go inboard. The one, two, the three. And now oh. they're under pressure, but Wands gets on the end of it. And they do that nicely, the Hawks. But again, they've just fallen down as they get towards about the half forward line. And even the few occasions they've got past that, they haven't damaged more well as the player Weatherall finds that player again in Cody McDonald. And Cody McDonald with that headgear on goes to Noblet. We've seen that a few times today. Playing the call. Noblet, he got the handball, oh, wow. he was on his hands and knees, but he was good enough to keep his cool and find McDonald, who was found with the ball, and now there'll be a it's, ball up. It's pretty sloppy. It is sloppy. It, it, it's very sloppy at the moment, and uh, so they've just gone back to their old ways again. Well, Boxer, just uh, a little bit of an update from our listeners, which is always great to see. I'll get to that in a moment, as Aiden Quirk puts one down Walsh's throat, so here's the time. Just to let you know, concurrently, at the same time or simultaneously, so yep. do you reckon you used that correct in the sentence when you said that the Tigers kicked two goals concurrently? What are you? No, you didn't. English teacher or something. <laughs> no, you I'm not sure you did, Box. I think no. I did. <laughs> no, but we both spoke then concurrently when I told you that you didn't use it properly. <laughs> As Porikali got it towards the inside 50 for the Tigers, Joe Collins was back there. Salter had to spin around in a tackle, eventually got the handball out. Good worker there by Jacobson. Squeezed Amble, just missed the target in Bailey and then got wrapped up. In a Salter tackle, uh, it was a quirk tackle, we're, and we'll have a stoppage. We're all seeing what I see. The, the more side, the turnovers, the, the mistakes they make in this quarter, it'd be very frustrating, even though they've got a, a fairly handy lead. They tighten that up, and they're going to be you know, more more than what they are in front now. Exactly yeah. right. It's a 29-point margin, and really it should be out past six goals, shouldn't it? Correct. Another stoppage. 19, make it 20-minute mark of this third quarter. We concurrently agreed on something. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> We did. Probably Boxer. getting a little bit better. Yeah, closer at least. Here we go. Wands takes the ball half back line that kicks. Sloppy, as Nick said. This game at times is sloppy. This kick has got more air on it than it needed. The kick from Campbell towards right half forward flank. Wands at grand level wins it again, but his handball couldn't find a teammate. But they've got the numbers over the ball, and one of those numbers was Clayton Kingy. Feeds off, gives ground. They do. Quirk goes backwards, looking for finding Hodge. I tell you what, they're making hard work of this. He oh. goes inside. The kick was smothered, and now on the end of it, he's going to be Lachlan McDonald. Opens the door up for another McDonald. That's Cody. His left foot kick. Can you believe this? Has found McDonald. We've got everyone except Ronald McDonald out there at the moment. Um, just been given a, a, a stop talking, apparently. <laughs> that was your to stop talking by my wife. Well, okay. Brandon McDonald. Well called, Poppy. Rolls in now from 45, puts it on its way, and you'd expect nothing but a goal. And that is what he's done. It's number seven for the afternoon for Brandon McDonald. He's on his way to double figures, pop star. He and is. I think uh, if he keeps up uh, at, this, at this rate, he might even get it this quarter. Wow. Wow. Jeez, 21 minute mark. He's going to kick three goals in a handful of minutes. I'm a bit frazzled because I've been told to stop talking, so I just don't know what to do. <laughs> no. Over to you, PC. <laughs> Uh, I'm just amazed that you're able to punt on your app and talk at the same time <laughs> and take a message from Marty. That's your phone. 35-point lead to Moore at the 21-minute mark of the third quarter. The McDonald's Gippsland scoreboard, 12-11, 83 to 7, 6, 48. The Tigers' big moments are about to break this open for the Moore Bowling Club this afternoon. Wack got a hand on it. Out towards Cody McDonald again. The McDonald's have been busy, and he got a free kick. Half forward flank now. He looks towards Brandon McDonald again and finds him. One grab, can't get the second. Ball comes to ground. Jacobson's done well. Got a handball out to a teammate who got wrapped up in the tackle quickly 
And 22 minutes now have passed. They need to send the runner out, get everybody outside of 50 and put <laughs> three back straight to the goal square. <laughs> Everyone else out. And this quarter we're on that McDonald's Gippsland School. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Whack. Tapped it down. Noblet attacked it with pace and left it behind again. We'll have another stoppage. 22 minutes gone. Third quarter, the margin is out to a game high 35. As whack again, a hit out's just continued to rack up for the Tigers. Kicked around the body though from Harry Wands, who's been busy. Klebney was out there on the half back flank, swept a handle over the top to Campbell Jolly. Right foot kick down the line to Marrick, who dropped the mark that he should have taken. Wetherill was able to sweep on it for the Tigers and go lateral to Walsh and now can square it in board to Carlson. They've got some switch continuing if they want to come to the grandstand side. McAuliffe is the one. It's two on one. And guess what? The one wins. Brandon McAuliffe marks. Plays on. Goes towards them. Get Brandon the McDonald. He dropped that mark. That was a sitter. Joe Collins was back there for the Hawks. Swept it over to Harry Wands. Out to Reese Solder. And he can go down the line or there'll be a free kick downfield. We'll go to Aidan Quirk. It's a little bit sloppy there by the Prez. Didn't have to do it. No, he didn't. Aidan Quirk now with the ball. Grandstand centre wing. This drew inside, trailing by 35 points, close enough to six goals. They'll need that just to win by a point. Can they get that? They've done it before in the first quarter, but they don't look like getting anywhere near close to that at the moment. They came out of the block hard last week against Moe, and then were a bumbling, stumbling mess late in the game. Harry Wands, 13 disposals this quarter. Oh, he's been busy, hasn't he? Wands coming off that half-back line. Guess what? He got the ball again, but on that occasion he was tackled ball and all. Noble at the player for more that had him held and it'll be another ball up I tell you well, I reckon it was the big fella uh, Tristan Wack that got the tap it was pretty close ball though a quick kick out of the pack goes towards the boundary it may stop centimetres oh, in oh, it did. does <laughs> nicely done by Kelway feeds it off to his teammate in Jared Marshall he gave it up to the big guy in Wack who goes looking for his uh, Bailey inside the corridor who considered playing on quickly but Bailey chose the best option is the smart option and that's to go back and kick along with that left leg and see if he can find a target well he looks for Lachlan McDonald. Here's Cody McDonald. Trying to take on the tackler. He gave a handball to Lachlan McDonald. He goes over the top down to Jacobson. He kicks to the top of the square. Lots of numbers for the Hawks. Back they run into a bit of strife. They got some uh, company. Zane Atkins tried to squeeze it out. Now it gets to Pratt. The run from half back. Kingy to Marshall. He goes in the middle of the ground now by Boot. Max Linton was the back there. Ryan Marrick gathered it. Graver to Hancock. There's no one inside the forward 50. He's kicked it. Could this be the Zambrero? A goal today? No, it's not going to make it. Blew it goes back there. Top of the square. Dry Makepeace was to help him out. His handball found Tyler Brown and they released the pressure and we're going to call this a throw, I believe. What? Or is it going to be a free kick to go back to Tyler Brown? It will be. So, just got uh, dealt with after he got rid of the football. Tyler Brown for the Tigers in the back pocket. So, Tyler Brown considers coming grandstand side and he chooses that as his option. Went looking for the big fella and I speak of Tristan Wack who kicked the goal in this quarter earlier on but the talk of the day has been Brandon McDonald who's kicked seven goals since the Quarter start time. of the second quarter the ball left half forward flank or a bit deeper into Druin's attack Dancing around nicely was Klebney, left foot, top of the square, out number two to one. Oh, he's been good, this guy. Yeah, the Tigers win it, and it's uh, Sam Walsh, who has been good, goes looking for, probably dropping what he should have taken, was Zach Carlson, and now picking up the crumbs is Josh Kiev, oh. uh, but his kick hits the point post, and it moves like the time Lee Matthews hit it. It doesn't break, but there was a lot of force behind that kick, but it wasn't accurate, so a free kick goes Morwell's way. Taylor Weatherall. Uh, gave it to Walsh and for Gippsland Isuzu Ute this afternoon. He's been a great contender. As Walsh has kicked though, oh, went across the face and Linton will be awarded the mark. Ryan Merrick came the other way as Linton was able to play on and nice kick out towards Riley Lopez. Halfback flank build up for the Tigers. Boxer said that Brandon McDonald will get 10 by three quarter time. He's on seven and we're at the 26 and a half minute mark. They kick it down the line. Another 40 minute quarter. Noblet will fly, couldn't mark it. Ground level handle out the back. Zane Atkins gave it in towards Calway. Uh, and now Bailey. This is Brow. Boyd Bailey tries to run under this run and gather it. Handballs just to some open space. Here's Brandon McDonald. Does it get over the back for him? Comes the other way. No, and he's going to wrap up Hodge in a tackle. And the umpire says we'll ball it up. 
27 minutes gone in this third quarter. It's been all the Tigers since quarter time. They're out to a 35 point game high margin here. Wack took it out of the ruck. Got put the ball, but it was smothered. Pratt came the other way. Bailey put him down in the tackle. Pratt wasn't happy with it. Good smother there by Brad Burden. Kicked off the ground there by Kingy. Here's Marshall for the Hawks, who kicks towards Ryan Merrick. Can't quite mark it. Good work by Makepeace to be front there. Get the handle to Walsh, who sweeps one inboard by hand to Riley Lopez. But the siren sounds, and the Tigers continue on the merry way. The Hawks didn't score a goal. They kicked five points in that quarter. And now the Tigers get three in the third quarter. It's a 35-point margin at three-quarter time. A quick break. We've got one to go here in Gippsland Live. Round eight action of the Alinta Energy Gippsland League. It is Gippsland Live on TRFM. All thanks to Harvey Norman Electrical Gippsland. Warm up with Breville's all-rounder plus connect heater. Fan purifier for just $3.99. Be warm at home with Harvey Norman Electrical. We're just days away from the 54th Taralgon Harriers Running Festival, including the Wind Network Marathon and Aussie Broadband Half Marathon. Enter now at taralgonharriers.org.au. The marathon starts at the Taralgon Vineyard and takes you along the stunning Gippsland Plains Rail Trail. But hurry, entry numbers are capped and places are filling fast. All the details are at taralgonharriers.org.au. Another community event proudly supported by TRFM. KBI Off-Road is the team you should trust for your vehicle's next repair fitting or service. For a huge range of off-roading equipment to prepare you for your next adventure, visit KBI Off-Road at 319 Princess Highway, Tarelgan. Soon, your next Macca's run could do more than fix your hunger. It could win you a share of almost $4,000. We want you to drive through for cash. Simply head to the drive through at your local McDonald's Gippsland restaurant, scan the QR code when it's safe to do so, and get your name into the drawer to win the daily cash giveaways. drive through for cash. Coming soon. Thanks to McDonald's Gippsland restaurants and TRFM. You bought a two kilo container of Magic Gravy? Yep, I bought a two kilo container of Magic Gravy. We're gonna need a bigger gravy boat. Magic Gravy gluten-free optional two kilo tubs to take home today. Everything's bigger at Brentcorp Bolt Barn in Dodcourt, Taralgon. Brentcorp.com.au The hand-crumbed, perfectly crunchy, gorgeous schnitzelus is often found resting happily in a wrap or roll, satisfying ravenous post-match hunger. There's only one habitat for such a delectable morsel, and that's schnitz to Zambero's new big burrito is so big, it'll crush any hunger. Loaded with double filling and double rice, it's sure to leave you satisfied. Head down to Zambero Taralgon today. Available for a limited time only, Zambero. Feel good next. G'day, can I help you? Uh, yes, I hope so. I'm digging a trench in our backyard, uh -huh. so I need one of those machines yep, that yep, goes cook, cook, cook. Oh, you need an excavator. Excavator, right, if you say so. And then to flatten out the dirt, I was thinking one of them doon doon. Uh, That'd be a whacker plate. We know which piece of equipment you need for your project, even if you don't. We hire them too. Mini loaders, drum rollers, tipper trailers and more. See you soon. Gippsland Wacker Noisen and Latrobe Valley Forklifts. Visit lvforklifts.com.au Australian made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. Mattresses and ensembles from the leading Australian brands. Lounge furniture and dining room furniture built for the family life with a great selection of options in fabric, leather, size and shape. Create your own bedroom furniture. Customise your bed height, fabric or timber stain. Let our experienced team help you design furniture to suit your home. Harvey Norman, supporting Australian-made manufacturing. Australian-made furniture and bedding now at Harvey Norman. With the release of the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 Series and brand new Ford Ranger, now is the perfect time to visit ARB to order accessories for your new vehicle. From bull bars, side rails, under vehicle protection and long range tanks, to canopy, suspension, dual battery systems, driving lights and so much more. ARB has everything you need for your next adventure. For expert advice, see the team at ARB Terrelgan, ARB Fansdale or the new flagship store, ARB Sales. Or visit arb.com.au. Adventure awaits. ARB Terrelgan Sale and Bansdale. You hit the road early, it's a long drive, and you're starting to get a little weary from the sun in your eyes. Driving tired can have the same effect as driving drunk. If you've been on the road for two hours, take a 15-minute break. Stop in at the nearest McDonald's restaurant in Gippsland. It's the perfect place to stop. You can stretch your legs, enjoy a coffee from a cafe, or grab a quick snack. A 15-minute break every two hours could help save your life. 
Another road safety message from McDonald's Gippsland. Road safe and Gippsland's own TRFM. Now, a look at the corner highlights. Gippsland live on TRFM. Should bring up the Tigers' 10th of the afternoon and went from there 24 lead to 26. There he is. Why the pressure on McDonald's? Hey, 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 computers, Gippsland. Save on HP, Lenovo and Acer today. Three down, one to go. The final quarter is about to start. This is Gippsland Live on TRFM. Uh, welcome back. It is three-quarter time. The margin's out to 35 points in favour of the Tigers. 12-11-83, Drew in a 7-6-48. And the Tigers getting three goals to none in that third quarter. Key stats, here's Paul Carter. All thanks to Gippsland, Izuzu U. I'll just go with the uh, players at the moment. Uh, 14 hit-outs to Tristan Wack and another two to Dan Musil. 31 hit-outs to Wack and 24 to Musil. Certainly dominating uh, Drew and who have had a total of uh, seven. In that quarter, James Jacobson, seven disposals. He's got 18. Tyler Brown's up to 19. Boyd Bailey, another nine, up to 21. Riley Lopres, Lopresi, <laughs> six to 15. Oh, Lopres. Lopres, will do. 13 to Dan Musil, 10 to Tristan Mack, Wack, uh, Five more to Nathan Noblet, he's up to 15. Ten disposals of Cody McDonald that, that quarter, he's up to 20. For uh, Druin, the main one there was Harry Wands. 13 disposals, he's up to tw 21 for the match. 17 to Josh Shiv. Uh, 18 to Aidan Quirk. 14 apiece to Tim Hancock and Clayton, Clayton Kingy. 12 to Jared Marshall. 11 to Reese Salter. Thank you very much, uh, Paul Carter, for those uh, key stats this afternoon. Got some around the ground scores for us. Have you and Nick Lachino? All thanks to Harvey Norman Furniture. Four and final quarter about to get underway. Yeah, I do have a couple of games here. It's got a tight one down the road at Terralgan. It's Terralgan 7 12 54. They lead Sale 8 4 52. And at three quarter time, Lee and Gather 16 7. They lead Maui 5 7. So it's a big leaders there for Lee and Gather. And Mafra 13 8 86. They lead Warrigal 6 6 42. Well, final quarter underway. Here's Rob Popplestone. Thank you. Musil will do the ruck work. He'll be doing it against Bethune. Goes in the Morwell direction. Uh, nicely done. Taken high. No play on the call. Fairly so. So just repeating that margin here at Morwell. It's Morwell 83, Druin 48. The game appears to be in Morwell's keeping. But strange things have happened in this particular game. Where sides can get runs on of five or six goals. Just got a couple of netball uh, updates for you, Poppy, if you like. Uh, Morwell uh, win 34-20 over Druin in the C grade. And the best on court went to Charlotte and a uh, young girl by the name of Michaela Cooling. So she did well. She is. Got the talent from Mum. As this particular <laughs> player, Klebney, goes inside forward 50. And they need to get the first goal to get some momentum. At this stage, they aren't able to do that. Max Linton's the player that eases the pressure around the body. Zach Carlson goes. A kick. Trying to find a teammate, he can't. The boundary will get in the way. And the will be a boundary throw in left, half forward flank, right half back flank, out of sight of the ground here at Morwell. Minute in, and the margin still at 35 points. Box is working through some of those other scores for us, I think. Free kick, it must have been behind play. He's gone Morwell's way. Looks to be Boyd Bailey. Comes inboard and to Walsh. And if he's not in the best players for the Tigers, well, I don't know who is. Gives it back to Bailey. He'd have to be another one too. Nice kick to Jacobson. Just gets over the top of his head. Hearn comes the other way. Gives away a free kick. Yes, he does. The free kick will go to Jack Fraser. At true centre-half back for the Hawks. Comes inboard. Finds a teammate. There's Harry Wands. He can chip it over the top again. He's got Aiden Quirk right in the middle of the ground of the rec reserve. This is a better build-up by the Hawks. It gets towards uh, Ditson. And Ditson will uh, look to get it moving quickly. Doesn't know which way to go on the end. He decides just to chip it up. It goes towards Ryan Marrick in the front spot. Ball from Linton at the back. Good work by Musil to Tyler Brown. And he found Brown and McAuliffe. And those boys have racked it up this afternoon. And McAuliffe will go towards Boyd Bailey. Or Jacobson will be the one in the end to take it. He led for a long, long way there, Jacobson, too. So he did really well to make up that ground. Eventually got to Boyd Bailey, and now he gets to Mason Porakali on the wing. So Porakali chooses to play on. He wants to draw the man. In fact, he dances around the man on the mark, does it nicely, almost too easily, as Boyd Bailey, a recipient of the handball, goes inside forward 50. Noblet's a the player there from Well, tries to keep it in with the left hand. Can he? No, he can't. Just 10 metres from Morwell's goals. They've Noblet is beaten to the ball by the boundary. Boundary throw in. They've worked in really well together, Noblet and McDonald down forward. Uh, 
You know, the lead up there from Noblet is chipped in with three for the afternoon. Is that right? Or four? Noblet has uh, just the one. Nathan Noblet has a kick. Th I thought he kicked three. Yeah, no, he's had three no. kicks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just the one it? goal. Special comment. What game are goal. you watching? <laughs> what am I watching? No, he can <laughs> tell you what the one. He can tell you what one race for it's called for, but he's got no idea what's happening here at Morwell. Ball half back what line, beat it off nicely. Drawing <laughs> through Josh Shiv, dances around one, two, draws. A player, tell you what, he's oh. run 35 metres. Yes, he has. And now says, No, you've ran too far. <laughs> Just as he thought about kicking it on three or four occasions, another man came at him and he dodged them beautifully but just ran too far in the end. So, what could have been a good piece of play? It was taken from him. The free kick will go blue its way from half back. He's got the option to go short, keep possession. He does that. He does it nicely too to Cody McDonald. Kicks are, in fact, it's AJ Makepeace on the outer side of the ground. Searching for, can he find his teammate in Musil? He can. Well, they're playing around with it a little bit, this Morwell side now. Yep. Brereton, centre half forward. Good yeah, check. does it nicely, really nicely. Is that Brandon McDonald up the ground? No. Or is it Ryan Hearn again? Ryan Hearn, outside 50, back to Musil, who's worked his way to within 55 and then goes in short. Gee, they've well, they did it well, didn't they? Cut their way through it. Lapree's got on the end of it. And he'll kick from right on 50 metres on a 45 degree angle. So it's going to take one of his best. Best his best will be good enough. Morwell 12 11, drawing 7 6, four and a half minutes gone. First quarter, Laprise from 49 and a half, a bit too much air, a bit like a wedge. Oh, high, but not we're so accurate. Straight through the hands of Brandon McDonald. And so now, as a consequence, it'll be a drawn free kick. Out of bounds on the full, so Fraser brings it back in and he kicks it out of bounds on the full as well, so it's going to go. Back and forth, Musil goes lateral to Walsh. And we're not following Walsh's touches today, but I... He's been fantastic. I dare say it'd be the high 20s as Walsh puts it towards Hearn! One hand up. He has had some shoulder issues, just wasn't confident to chuck both of them up. And in the end, nearly pulled down an absolute belter. It's good to see him back out on the park. Limited games over the last three years of football for Ryan Hearn. He's had knee and shoulder issues. It's great to see him back out there. Five minutes into this Levinal quarter, the margin still sits at 35 points. Whack to the handball to Noblet. He kicks around the body. What's he looking for? Goal number seven for the day, Noblet? No, he's only got one. He just needs to It may it. have bounced through, has it? No, it's been touched and it's a minor score. He's kicked one goal six, I think. Ball. Brought back in quickly by Joe Collins. Goes towards the outer side. Can he find a teammate? He cannot. So ducking in there nicely for Morwell well, was Mason Porakali that put some pressure on, but again drawn with numbers. Worked the ball out slowly. Good force, a good punch. Force the ball out of the hands by Josh oh, Schiff. good kick. And now a quick kick forward it was by Boyd Bailey. Found a man on the mark in Jacobson who's got a leading player on. Whack was that player. Punched away from him the first drawn player. There'll be Aiden Quirk who's got time to settle and give off and that's exactly what he does. Klebney's the player who receives it from Harry Wands out of sight of the ground. And Klebney finds Marich on the lead. Ryan Marich left half forward flank, looks forward, kicks long one on one, yeah, finds him nicely working in front was Tim Hancock whose experience got him away from a body-body contact he found some clean air, took a clean mark and from 40 metres out almost directly in front should get a long-awaited goal, Paul Carter, for this drew inside. First goal, well, it might be, from the 17 minute mark of the second quarter, Pop so here we go, the pressure on Tim Hancock You'd think the game is dead and buried, but we need Hancock to draw them one goal closer. And guess what? We're going to be waiting a little bit more time. It's been a quarter and a half since they've scored a goal. And they're going to have to wait again until they get another opportunity. It's uh, the last six scores for Drawn have been behind. So 7 7 49. Mall 12 12 84. The Harvey Norman Computer Scoreboard. Seven minute mark last quarter. Walsh kicked to Brown, who kicked to Wetherill. So I reckon they, in the first quarter, kicked six goals, one from memory. Since that time, they've kicked one goal, six. Wow. So Weatherall kicks it outside his defensive 50, looking for Wack. Got over the back to Musil, who gave a handball to Wack. They've good done hands. this well. Porikali can get it back to Wack by hands. And good tackle just to stop that forward run from the Hawks. Here's Harry Wands again. Got it inboard towards Kingy. He had to slap it forward. 
They got numbers back. Bailey went by hand to Musil, who handled underground to Porakali. Gave it back to Bailey, who ran on. He gets it over the top by hand to Wack. Back to Bailey. A quick kick to half forward. Lachlan McDonald can't mark it. Drew and are under a little bit of pressure. They're under a lot of pressure, to be fair. And coming the other way was Pratt to Collins. And he got it to Harry Wands, who can turn and deliver it nicely to Ryan Marrick. Half forward flank build up. Too far out to score for the Hawks. A couple of options present. Ignored. He had to go inboard. Just missed Wands. Kingy well. He looked up and then toe poked it. Jai Makepeace said, I'll take the footy. And I'll handle off to me mate Max Linton, who kicks it out wide to Lachlan McDonald. And he'll look for the boundary and he'll be pushed over by Regan Hodge. And a boundary throw in eight minutes in. This final quarter, we haven't had a goal scored as yet, Boxer. Scott, we've got an A-grade netball score from Terrelgan. Terrelgan defeated Sale 50-33 to in A-grade. Thank you very much. And in the AFL, the Brisbane Lions are 14-point leaders, make that 15 over the Giants, and the Cats are 43 up against the Crows. OK, Tigers half-back line, they're starting to run again. The Tigers side and creating space. McDonald, Kobe-type, left foot kick. He's probably better on the run with his left than his right. Finds a teammate there in McCall. If it goes to the top of the square, and guess what? Is it? Could it? No, it's not. It's one of them. Lachlan McDonald, you think it could be? Yep, 100%. OK, Lachlan McDonald, not Brandon, who's kicked seven today. <coughs> so Lachlan McDonald, 25 metres out directly in front, has every opportunity to bring up Morwell's 13th goal of the afternoon. I wouldn't say it's a clinical performance, but it's certainly been impressive enough. Directly in front, off the boot. Guess what, Shocker? Sure. That probably sums up the day. It's a bit of hit and miss yep. from both sides today. Another minor score. Yeah, they've definitely dropped off since uh, since half time. The skill level <laughs> has really been 50-50, would you say, Scud? Absolutely, yep. I've got another A-grade netball score as well. It's in the Moe Lee and Gath game. An absolute thriller. Moe A-grade have defeated Lee and Gath a 56-55 in a, what was a great game of netball over there. We'll keep these scores coming for you this afternoon to get you up to speed. You are listening to Gippsland Live on TRFM, right across Gippsland in the valley. And it's all for Harvey Norman Electrical in Gippsland. The Tigers are full of running. Musil gave a handball to Wack, who got it inside forward 50. However, Kingy, and that is the coach, Jordan, who takes the uncontested mark in his back half. And they've been under pressure all afternoon. His kick just at the toes there. Of Collins in board, he comes to Clayton Kingy. Half back flank though, it's slow build up. Comes in board, missed the target. The Tigers are going to put it back inside their forward pretty Here quickly. Here he is, Brandon McDonald can run to 40 metres and put through a behind. And that's disappointing. He's got seven goals this afternoon and probably seven behinds as well. Uh, interesting thing, the uh, Moore Club record in this year, in this league for goals against Druin is eight by a guy called R. Peachy from the 60s. and That's Russell Peachy, that's and my uncle. D Dean MacDonald. Oh, there you go. Uh, which, of course, is now being played over uh, Yolonial on North, D. Mac. As the ball comes in again, at ground level, was Druin nicely done. They get it towards the wing. They're under pressure again. They want to see the boundary line. Hancock just taps it forward. Clibney tried to run onto it. Makepeace wrapped him up in a tackle. How good's Paul Carter? Just what are those two? Just off, just off the top of the head. Just no, I looked that one up. <laughs> <laughs> Number one stat. That's man in the business, Paul Carter. Poppy's here as well. And special comments, Nick Lachino for Carpet Country. Right, next one to look up is, has a player kicked more than seven goals this year in the league? Or is this the highest amount of goal? Yeah, Brett Eddy. Brett Eddy has kicked... Ten. He's kicked ten. Ten, ten. so... Good I effort. Too. I'm not sure that he's going to finish up with ten, but he may do. Did you like how I rattled that one off? Yeah, he did. He done very well. Just an update out of that Lee and Gatham Moe game. Moe got no bench and they've got four hamstring injuries out of the game. Uh oh, Whoa. danger sign. Strength and conditioning coach might get the sack during the week. So, uh, the ball's thrown back in. Decent Jeez. sort of throw about 35 <laughs> metres from the intersection. The, uh, the ball was on the intersection of Ford 50 and Boundary and nearly made itself to the centre square as Musil takes a mark last line of defence. Looks like he's, uh, he's, oh, he's done still got really the bandages. Well he has. And now they run it out. Jacob's 
got the ball, he's going to draw and then give, and he drew and gave to McDonald, yeah, who bounces once, looks up forward, little chip kick over the top, finds uh, his teammate in Mason Pori Carly, and from the half forward flank, had to think about that one, didn't I, Boxer? He did. Campbell, left foot kick around, forces himself into the uh, forward 50, good take note, overrun at McDonald on that occasion. Do they get a second go at it? They free do, kick. free kick goes Morwell's way. And it's going to go the way of Lachlan McDonald. When we get a chance to, we've got some really tight games in the mid-gips lane. I'll pass on in a minute. All right. I'll feed them off now while they're Lachlan McDonald's going for it. Okay, we've got uh, Ballara, a uh, three-point leaders over Fish Creek. More or least a leading by two points against the undefeated Tarwin at the moment. Okay, so Lachlan McDonald goes short, lead on. Can he find a teammate? He can. Nicely done. That player is Boyd Bailey on the tightest of tight angles. The boundary just centimetres to his right. He's going to kick around the body with his left, or he's looks like he's going to do that. He is. Then runs on his left and actually kicks a drop. Oh. Hit it beautifully. <laughs> Pinpoint perfect it was. And a real nice finish from a good piece of play leading up to that kick for goal. It takes all to 13, 14, 92. A 43 point lead over Druin, 7, 7, 49 on the Harvey Norman computer's scoreboard. And Boyd Bailey in the 13 minutes of this quarter has had nine disposals. Oof. Special comments brought to you this afternoon by <laughs> Carpet Country, helping dreams become a reality since 1981. Boxer, thank you for those comments after the goal. Yeah, I was just waiting for Poppy to lead me in, but he didn't lead me out. And uh, got me in trouble. So, <laughs> oh, geez, all of a sudden, it's my fault. <laughs> Back in the middle now, Wack got a hand on it. Hancock tried to tackle Wack at the same time and just got boot the ball. Brad Brereton has it, puts it inside forward 50. Noblet on a long searching oh, lead, nice stretching, take. stretching, and beautiful take. And he takes the mark in the field of play. That was a hamstring. Yeah, that happened. That's for sure. <laughs> 45 meters out. Cody McDonald presents. He's too far. He's too far out. The boy. Well, he just needs to do what Bailey did. 43 points is the margin. He's a left footer. Well, exactly right. A couple of moments ago, this is probably a little bit further out. You're backing him in, are you, Poppy? Or? The oh. left footer. He runs around exactly what Bailey did. He puts it on its way. And guess what? It's a carbon copy. They've done exactly the same. <laughs> Poppy's got the earpiece into Nathan Noblet, and he put it straight through the middle. Now, now, he needs that one, doesn't he? He does. So he's got two. <laughs> he's got two now. So I was nearly there all the way. But, uh, look, yeah, it made me sound a little bit uh, off there, too. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even back him at all to even get anywhere near that. So, a great goal there. Uh, great movement too by the Tigers moving the ball out, out of the in transition as well. So, um, two goals probably from the identical position as well and give them all a handy lead right now. 49 points at his boxer at the 15 minute mark at the last quarter on the Harvey Norman Computers scoreboard. So, uh, like drawn. Nick Lucino is a good comments man. Just been out of luck today. <laughs> Play a whack with the ball. Centre of the ground. You get a free kick. Goes nice. Musil's the target on the lead, he's up forward, he's played in the centre, he's played down back, and now can he find a teammate inside Ford 50? He can't cut off. It was by Kai Kirk. Kai Kirk looks grandstand side, he gets himself in and out of trouble as he goes oh, searching nice for crap. Hermanson, and he gets a good mark, does Caleb Hermanson. And his kick in board looking for Kingy. Uh, went through the hands of Kingy, so Kai Kirk tries to lend a hand, but can't. Morwell tried to draw a player. McDonald's on uh, his own. He is, and uh, I'll tell you what, another McDonald's trying to get a handle on it. Cody he's going to get it. Can't. And he's going to go short. Is he going to go short or go for goal? He's gone for goal, and oh. he's just missed. That player was Boyd yeah. Bailey. I'm sorry, I'm going to be a little bit critical there. And he just didn't lower the eyes. He had Brandon McDonald. The top, uh, top of the uh, goal square there on his own, screaming for the ball. And if I know Brandon McDonald, he would have been screaming for the ball. 14, 15, 99. Mall, their 50 point leaders over Druin. Yeah, big moment. Uh, all thanks to Mall Bowling Club. Pot and Palmer night as the Tigers go forward again. This time it's James Jacobson. Runs, lowered the eyes on that occasion, and got it to Brandon McDonald. Come on, well, he's three more. He's got seven. We're at the 16 and a half minute mark. We're on Brandon McDonald watch. The most kicked against Druin for the Tigers sits at eight. And can he join those two as he comes in? And he puts it through. Oh, no, oh. he doesn't. He hits the post. And nearly marked it as a bounce back to him <laughs> from 15 metres. I can't believe he did that. I uh, just, I think he got a rush of blood, didn't he? And uh, anyway, he shouldn't miss those ones. He's kicked that absolute rippers through the afternoon and uh, he missed the one that we should have got. Yeah, so I reckon from memory, is it seven goals, two he's got? Paul Carter, oh, something like that. Oh, yeah. Well, that margin, 51 points. It is. 
Well, I reckon he's got a few more than two, Poppy. Has he? Yeah. No, I, I think he'd nearly be 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, really? That many? I reckon. Oh, here we go. Well, Drew and are trying to work this out of their back half. Collins had it. Gave it off to the runners. Here's Harry Wands who gives it back to Joe Collins. Oh, he's in a bit of strife now. He's coughed the footy up and Jacobson swoops on it. Kicks towards Brad Brown. Beautiful pick up off the toes Look to Carlson to Brandon McDonald. And from exactly the same spot from 30 <laughs> seconds ago, he plays on this time. Kicks around his body. He's got eight. And BMAC. The most kicked against the Druin side from a Tiger. He joins a couple of greats. Yeah, some great play there too from the Tigers. And um, they're just starting to really take great control here of this game. Just a run on two from the younger brigade. Using the ball a lot better this quarter. Um, and just getting the ball inside 50 um, <laughs> as you like. So BMAC 8 on his way to 10. And uh, that takes the lead out to 57 points for Maul against Druin. 15-16-106 to Druin, 7-7-49. He's got a little bit to go for the central Gippsland record, Maul Druin, which is 16. OK. Yeah, I'm yes. sure that he's going to get there. <laughs> nah. We've still got 10 minutes to go as uh, Wack gets the ball down, play on to the call. Wack actually gets the free kick behind play, so the big red-headed Ruckman. Been there too, you know that. Oh, one 16. sec. No, it wasn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's been at 16, have you, Boxer? <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, that was, well, he's currently 61, so it was a few years oh, ago. Good grab. That's yeah, a nice grab. grab by Pori Carly. Outside 50, feeds off nicely. Here we Hits go. On top of the square. Yes. He's marked it again, McDonald. Has he not? Yes, he, he has. has. So he's got eight. Right, he needs composure here. Oh, right. And he's marked it right in front of the point post, so no it'll favour the right leg of Brandon McDonald, who no you'd think will area. open up the area and kick around the body, and that's what he needs to do. Can we see goal number nine? Can we see a record? We yes! Can. Yes. <laughs> goal number nine. And I reckon that's almost deserving of the Zambero goal of the day because it's a record. I tell you what, though, hats off to Pori Carly too because uh, his lead up and hands, his strong hands as well. And that's just that quick movement from the Tigers now, isn't it, Poppy? They were prepared to move the ball real quick. That's what happens when you do that and it goes inside to a one-on-one -on -one contest. The day he's having, he's not going to get beaten. Open up the forward line. Everyone get out. Everyone out. Get the 10. Come on, move everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a 63-point lead now to Maul. 19 minutes played in the last quarter. Yeah, it's getting cold in here. <laughs> it is cold. Well, they go again. Drawn under 18s, want to fight us. Wow. <laughs> Tucked it out to Brereton. He's been clean below his knees this afternoon. Kicks towards the half-forward flank. They've got some runners. Campbell's a one. Here's Lopez. Took on a couple of tackles. The ball comes out. Play on, said the umpire. We're getting excited because McDonald's got nine. Hancock says, I'm having none of this. I'm getting it going our way. He hambles across to Campbell Jolly. Gets it to Harry Wands. He goes towards half-forward. Ryan Merritt can't take the one-hander. The Tigers are going to swoop on it. They've got some numbers. Linton, though, goes to ground. Try to get a handball out the back there. Nicely done. Tyler Brown handballs. He coughed it up, though. Klebney gives a handball inboard. Lowers the eyes, does quirk. Missed him, though. And they're still under a little bit of pressure. The target defence working hard there was Pratt. He gave a handball backwards. Now they work again. Goes to Pratt. Wrapped up in a Carlson tackle. The bump I said, my ball. At the wrong end of the ground for McDonald to kick 10. 21 minutes have ticked over. The margin, well, who cares? It's at 63. But it doesn't matter. We're after 10 goals from Brandon McDonald. Hancock goes backwards now to his teammate. This time was Marshall. Here we go. Brandon McAuliffe. Now they've got some run. Here we go as the call. And they're on. But ah. Linton couldn't get it out. Kingy had to dive and drop the mark. Now Cody McDonald's got some wheels late in the last quarter. Two bounces. Three bounces. Make it four bounces. Get to the wing. Boxer says go. He gets towards, is it Walsh? He's is. He's moved him forward. One on one in the goal square. McDonald top of the square. It goes. Can't get it. Gets to the back. Salter was there. Gathers it. Handballs off.
goes towards the outer side. The race is on. The first player there, South Galway. Can he keep the ball in? He can. Or can he? It was a good smother by Morwell uh, as they tried to clear the half-back line. They do that now, do the visitors from half-back to half-forward. And off they go again. Goodly, uh, good work by Kai Kirk. Bounces once, twice. Can he keep a handle on it? He can. Can he get the goals? He cannot. So they're still searching for their first goal since the 17-minute mark of the second quarter, if you don't mind. Remembering at quarter time, it was drawn by more than five goals, or thereabouts. It was uh, something like 25 points, so they needed more than four, that's for sure. And now they trail by ten. What? How'd that happen? Well, if you're listening, you would have really found out because the Tigers have uh, just cut them to pieces and they're doing that right now, using the ball almost arrogantly from the half-back line. This kick needs to be better than it was, though, because Kingy takes a strong mark outside defensive 50. Plays on and puts it to the top of the square. They've got oh, one there. No, they come over the back. Linton, good little kick. There's a free kick. It will be paid. Is it going to... I think it's going to be Pratt. That's going to be... Yeah, Pratt for just chopping the arms there. Um, Linton. Scud man. Yeah, so Linton come over the top, chop the arms, and Sam Pratt will go back directly in front. And a much... Well, I'm going to say much needed goal. He's not the, there yet. No, the margin 63. Uh, they haven't had a goal since the 17-minute mark of the second quarter have drawn. And Sam Pratt comes in directly in front, should put it through for him, and he That's does. Good boy. Straight through, Sam Pratt. Yeah, just a much needed one. Well, you're going to call it much needed, isn't it? Because you just got to put a little bit more back into that scoreboard and that score sheet for him as well. But uh, they worked hard for that goal, the Druin team. And uh, here comes our little uh, mascot, uh, Poppy, for a rest on the bench there. So look at those locks. They are free-flowing at the moment. Are they doing it concurrently or not? No, <laughs> they're flowing concurrently, yes. yes. There you go. Bleach blonde hair with white tips. <laughs> and no sideburns. No. 24 minutes played in the final quarter, and it is more. 112 to Druin 55 on the Harvey Norman Computer School Board. Quick update for you, A-grade netball here at Morwell. They win 51 to 27 against Druin and Shannon Freeman was best on court for the Tigers. The Tigers now with the ball. Nicely done. Quick handball. Dances around. He does it good too, does Zach, young Zach Carlson. Feeds it off to the half-forward line. Noblet feeds off a handball to McDonald. Can McDonald find Musil inside forward 50? He can. Now, Here we go. Can Musil find McDonald on the lead? No, he's said go back. I'm going to have a go at goal. I know McDonald needs one more for 10, but I haven't got one today myself. So Musa will do his best to find the goals. He'll kick from 45 on a 45. He's on the right side for a right footer. The kick's going to have to be a good one, though, and off the boot. It's going to fall short and go across the face. And oh, the mark that's been taken. It is. But who's taken it? No, no, it? no mark. They oh. called it... He's going to ball it up. It was well, McDonald too. I tell you what, I thought he took a good pack mark there. Umpire didn't pay it. You wrecked the play. The ump. <laughs> There's the sense of oh. theatre. Oh, whack. Quick kick around the body from whack. Goes whack into the goal post and a behind for the home side. 16, 17, 113. Maul to 8, 7, 55. Druin, Harvey Norman, computers, scoreboard. Well, Harry Wands plays on out of full back. Clears the area, gets to the wing. I can't mark it though, the Hawks, Jacobson stops, props, gathers, handballs out to no one in particular, Pratt came the other way, well, he's got nowhere to go, he had to boot, boot the ball and it's going to work out, is it? It does, it lands in the hands of Seth Calway, who quickly played on to Quirk, he chips it towards centre half forward to his brother, it was uh, Aiden to Kyle and Kyle can chip it over the top to Collins, diving mark. And that was a great mark in the end. Good transition from the Hawks. They'll have a shot on goal. 25 metres out, slightish angle. And they trail, though, by 58 points. Although, more importantly, we're at 26-minute mark of the final quarter and Brandon McDonald's on nine goals. No, that umpire stuffed everything right up. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> McDonald will take a mark. The siren will go. Ooh. They kick it after the siren. <laughs> Joe Collins at this stage. 26-minute mark. Comes in, puts it on its way and misses. Uh, well, that was a kick <laughs> after the siren. It just wasn't Brandon McDonald. But the Tigers have won. After they trail by 25 points at quarter time, they win by 57. And Brandon McDonald, well, uh, guess what? We're going to be talking to him in a moment because he kicked nine goals for the afternoon. A great performance from BMAC. And the Tigers get a couple wins in a row.